And good morning, everyone. I'm TJ Alds of I-45 Now. And uh, something new and uh, really inventive. We hope you have some fun with us today as well as learn a lot as well. I'm at the Friendswood Chamber of Commerce and we are having what's called the Let's Go Expo, uh, a virtual business expo. And joining me now are our committee members from the Friendswood Chamber of Commerce to talk more about this today. We have Lindsey Vaughn from Remax and Dream. Uh, Dan Cars from in Text Loan and Carol Markintel, the uh, president of the of the Friendswood Chamber of Commerce. Thank you all for being on with us here today, guys. And uh, Liz, let me start with you on this: is that you know this was uh, supposed to be something we did in person uh, some time ago, but COVID changed all of that and decided to go virtual. Why don't we talk about that some? Well, for us as a chamber board, we wanted to make sure that we gave our members some sort of value in a time where we haven't been able to see y'all. We haven't been able to connect with our networking breakfasts and lunches. So we wanted to give you something that was really of value. So we created some education surrounded by business owners. When you're an independent business owner, you don't have a board of directors to go to. So we pulled our membership. We asked them some things that they would want to know as an independent business owner. And then we put this event together to kind of give them that education. Yeah. And, and Dan, one of the things about doing it this way, obviously uh, a lot has gone virtual in the last year in a lot of businesses. So we'll be talking about that some a little bit today, but you just talk about how this kind of mashes up with kind of the new world we've all learned in the last year, thanks to the COVID-19 pandemic. Absolutely. In fact, uh, people have become so acclimated with the idea of communicating online that I think it is the new norm. Uh, I think people are gonna love getting back together in person, but we've learned so much for so long that it's bound to stick and really benefit companies uh, going forward, no doubt. Yeah, and, and Carol, you know, always when it comes to talking to business in Friendswood, Friendswood Chamber of Commerce is at the lead of that. Can you talk about what you have seen from your membership, not only from what happened last year, but as they might plan us going into the new year. We're gonna be talking with a lot of folks today about that, but as a, as a chamber, what are you seeing as the new trends coming out of what we've had to deal with for the last year? Well, I see um, a great trend in people networking this way by Zoom and Skype, but we still need that personal uh, contact with each other. So we've done what we've had in the last year to keep that communication going between our members. Yeah. And one of the things I think it's probably, you know, that gets lost on a lot of folks is, is that yes, we have the technology available to it, but having that personal get together type of thing. And I wonder though too, is, is that now with the chamber, how much of that's going on now as we're starting to have more kind of in-person events. Uh, yes, we are. We did have our gala back in February, and we had the State of the City two weeks ago, and we had um, about 135 people attend, and it was just a great way to bring our community back together with the city and the business community. How about in, in general, have you been able to talk to many folks uh, business-wise or community organizations that are kind of taking the same approach? Uh, to having kind of more in-person events, but maybe a little bit different than they would have a year ago? Yes, we're, we're beginning to rent out our boardroom for organizations that are wanting to get back together in person. Uh, so, and, uh, yeah. and again, if you're just joining us, folks, this is the Let's Go Expo, a virtual business expo presented by the Friendswood Chamber of Commerce. I'm your host, TJ Halls of I-45 Now, and we want to thank Interfaith Caring Ministries uh, one of our sponsors of this program here today, uh, always helping out those in need. And they've had that demand increase because of the pandemic. If you can help them out, you can find them at Interfaith Caring Ministries online uh, and for more information. Let's see. I mean, one of the things is, is you talked about talking with members of the chamber about what they would like to do. Uh, how, how many were like, okay, we have to do this virtual? How many were saying, no, we still try to do something in person? Because I'm sure that that was some of a balance that had to be struck in this, right? Well, we started the planning of this almost six months ago. So when we started polling them, there was a lot more people not meeting in person. Now we have a lot more people vaccinated. We have a lot more people willing to go out in public. But when we started it, it was about a 60-40 mix. I bet if we pulled them today, it would be a little bit different. 
So we are having an in-person expo further down the line. It's already in the calendar, but we felt like we needed to do something now to help businesses navigate through the wreckage for say of the last 12 months. Yeah, we should point out and said not only uh, was the in-person delayed, but the virtual version of this was delayed too, because we ran into weather situations along the way, the freeze in particular. I uh, really kind of changed things up for a lot of us on things and the calendar, the way things go. I, it, it, I wondered too, Dan, you were seeing that everywhere. It's like, uh, it's like 2020 has decided to continue into 2021. Hopefully what we've learned here today will give folks a chance to like say, all right, enough of this. We're going to move forward one way or another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just segueing off of what you said over our delay of this broadcast because of the uh, weather event. I wondered, since the attitude of so many about COVID was it's behind us, which is not, of course, um, that the uh, message we delivered would be untimely. But it turns out we're still very much in the throes of COVID. So. Well, and I wonder, though, too, this, and anyone can chime in on this, is that we have now found ourselves, I think, in a situation in which businesses have learned just to kind of overcome and to just take every challenge that comes at you. There is no... The, the planning for the next thing actually is a part of every business plan now, whereas it used to be maybe we just think about, all right, we've got to prepare for hurricane season. Now let's prepare for anything that come our way in any time. Are y'all seeing that, uh, and, and anyone chime in on this one, uh, seeing that more of adjustments from the business community in Friendswood area? Well, I can say this. Um, I'll go back as far as Harvey. When our community was uh, flooded, homes, businesses, and we all came together to help each other out. And that's just what we do here in Friendswood. It's uh, the school district gets involved and we just do whatever we can to keep our businesses going, our community and families, uh, to make sure that they have a place to stay and um, just really good reach for this community. Uh, and that, and that is, you know, and again, overcoming challenges, this community has shown it as well, too. And talking about overcoming challenges on a, on a regular basis, I want to bring in now Susie Dominguez from Interfaith Caring Ministries. Uh, and, uh, and it, it is, uh, I'm sorry, Jessica's on with us. I thought Susie was on, but it's actually Jessica. Hello, Jessica. Okay. Have you on with us again. Uh, Interfaith Caring Ministries, uh, I mentioned this before. They're one of our sponsors uh, of this presentation today. Uh, and uh, while I'm talking with her, we'll let everyone else kind of take a break for right now and uh, we'll come back to you. But we'll talk to you right now, Jessica Peterson of the Interfaith Caring Ministries. I mentioned this just a little while ago. The pandemic has changed a lot for businesses, but for y'all, I mean, Interfaith Caring Ministries does so much for the community. Let's first, so maybe folks may not be uh, know y'all well, but tell folks about Interfaith Caring Ministries and what y'all do for the community. Okay, good morning, TJ. Thanks for having ICM on this morning. Um, so yeah, if you're unfamiliar with Interfaith Caring Ministries, we've, we've actually served the community for 35 years. 2020 marked our 35th anniversary as an agency. And we help families, seniors, and individuals that are in Friendswood and Clear Creek School Districts um, if they have a need for financial assistance. So we refer to the clients that we serve as the working poor which means that day-to-day -day living expenses, they're able to support and provide for themselves. But if an unexpected um, financial obstacle comes up, like a, a car repair or a medical bill, then they're struggling um, with that unexpected hurdle. And so at that time, we're able to step in and help that client with financial assistance, either for a rent payment or a utilities bill. Um, and then we also have the ICM food pantry on site at our League City office and we can help with um, pantry essentials for that household as well. Uh, and what has been a challenge during the pandemic uh, so far and what continues on? That's the most important thing is because, you know, one of the things is, and Dan mentioned this earlier, is that, you know, some people think, oh, COVID-19 is behind us, but really it's not. And the after effects may be, we may be dealing with for years, particularly in the economic end for folks. Uh, how are y'all meeting those needs and what's out there that y'all really need right now? Right. So we, um, our biggest thing when the shutdown happened last March was that we didn't want there to be a disruption to our services. So we were able to stay open. Obviously, we had to pivot the way that we were serving our clients last spring. Uh, we were asking them to you know, submit their paperwork online or through email. We were doing a lot of client interviews over the phone at that time. 
um, since then, now a year later, we're having clients come into our office. They're still staying masked up, trying to socially distance as much as possible. We're staggering those client interviews. And then at the food pantry, they're delivering the food directly to the client's vehicle instead of having the client come into the pantry. Um, I will say that, of course, there's an ongoing need. We've helped twice as many clients last year as we normally would have. And so that equates to over 4,000 people that we've helped with food assistance and then 1,800 households that we helped with financial um, rent and utilities assistance. We were able to have our Christmas store event in December where we were able to serve um, the families that needed toys for their kids during the holiday season. We helped 142 families during the holiday season, which is about 285 kids in our community. Um, the need obviously is still great. We always have a need in our pantry for essential items. Um, many of our clients are on food stamps, and so we're unable, um, they're unable with food stamps to get things like baby items, diapers, wipes, baby food, as well as um, feminine hygiene products, paper goods. Those are always in high demand, as well as toiletry items. Um, another way that we have a need right now is for volunteers. And so if you're able to volunteer your time at our ICM resale shop in Webster, there's always a need for volunteers at resell to help with um, receiving the donated items as well as sorting and pricing items there. We also have a need for volunteers with our client interview positions. So if you'd like to work directly with our client population, you can interview them, um, address their needs, and then present a pledge to our director of client services on their behalf. There's great ways to get involved and give back to ICM. Um, you can just give us a call at 281-332-3881. Our website is also up on the screen right now, and that is icmtx.org. Yeah, and it's a great organization uh, that helps out. And, and folks may not tell them about the service area that y'all provide through ICM. Uh, ICM. Yes, so ICM serves clients in the community that are zoned to either Friendswood ISD or Clear Creek ISD. So if you're in a zip code that is zoned to one of those two school districts, we're able to provide services for your family. Great. And those are just joining us, Jessica Peterson of the uh, Interfaith Caring Ministries on with us right now. Uh, and a great organization, one of the sponsors of the Let's Go Expo we're having on uh, today. Uh, as you look forward, you know, obviously, Paul, a lot of what we're talking about today is what's the next thing? What what have y'all changed in the operations that you think are going to be with you from this point forward now that maybe out of necessity you had to make adjustments, but found you were able to serve a need better? Um, I would say the biggest change that we've had um, so again, early on in the shutdown last spring, we did have to shut down the ICM resale shop. We didn't see a safe um, way that we could keep the shop open. So it was closed last spring for about three months. Um, we have fully reopened ICM resale since that time. Um, we're actually able to accept donations now, Monday through Saturday from 10 to four. And then we also do um, pickups of large furniture donations. So if you're unable to bring a furniture item to, directly to the store yourself, we can schedule pickups of large furniture items on Thursday and Saturday. Um, this, the number for the resale shop is 281-332-2025. So if you're looking to donate, if you're doing some spring cleaning, that's a great way to give back directly to the community. And then proceeds from the resale shop directly fund our client services programming. So it's a great way to give back to our mission. Uh, uh, let me get you to give that number one more time just so we can put it up on the screen for everyone, if you would, there. Yeah, the ICM resale shop, it, the phone number is 281-332-2025. So 281-332-2025, um, we got it up on the screen right there for the ICM resale. That's a way you can help out. And at the same time, a lot of folks have found that uh, they have items uh, that during uh, COVID that they don't need any longer and they can go ahead and pass along. And as you can see on the screen right now, we have the website you can go to icmtx.org, icmtx.org. Uh, to find out more information. Uh, and we'll be talking with Jessica a little bit later in this program as well, right uh, between 11.45 and 11.50. So uh, she'll be coming back on with us. And uh, at that point, we're going to talk about uh, maybe particular programs that are need in the Friendswood area. Jessica, thanks for coming on with us. We do appreciate you, uh, as always. And y'all are doing great work there and, uh, and, and deserve to be supported 
uh, as, as much as we can. So thank you for coming on, Jessica. We'll, we'll talk to you here uh, in just a little bit as well. All right. Thanks, TJ. And then heading back now, bringing us back on Carol Markintel, uh, the president of the uh, of the Friendswood uh, Chamber of Commerce, coming back on with us now. Uh, and Carol, let me let me just chat with you a little bit because a lot of folks may not realize uh, just exactly what a uh, uh, a Chamber of Commerce does. And before you get talking, you're you're muted there, just so you uh, you know that we can get your mic turned back on. That's the other thing I think we've all learned. Uh, during this is, hey, your mic is off. Uh, and anyway, but uh, talk about this because a lot of folks don't know, uh, and, I, and they may have just learned a lot from the, of the chamber this year because y'all been a communication outlet. You've been the the advocate side of business out here, uh, and but maybe the most important thing is getting word out about who's open, who's not, the changes in services and the like. But talk about just first, what is a, a chamber of commerce and what do you do for a community? Well, uh, Chamber of Commerce is a nonprofit organization. Most uh, cities um, have them. And we are an opportunity for businesses to join the Chamber so they can network their business um, with other business um, people. So uh, instead of working behind your computer all the time, you can come to networking events, get to know people. Because I always say, People are going to do business with people they know and trust. And having that opportunity um, just come out and visit and do business with uh, other businesses. And, uh, uh, and, go ahead. And what do you think about that? It's, it's a lot of networking, I guess, that's involved, obviously. Uh, in this uh, and membership, but can you can you explain to folks too? Is it, it, it someone who may open up a new business and say, well, what what benefit is it to me? Because do I just get a ribbon cutting, or what else is involved uh, that can really help my business out? Well, we tell people also, you got to get out of the chamber what you put in the chamber. So um, yeah, we will come out and do a ribbon cutting and get your picture in the paper and advertise that for you. But we also, once you're a member, you get to do a free spotlight table at our luncheons. And that's a big value because you're right there in front of about a little over 100 people. And that way you can have one-on-one -on -one communications instead of, it's hard to go out and co-call. Since this last year, you, you know, with COVID, a lot of offices were closed. So that, that kind of networking uh, came to a halt. So what we did in the beginning also, we got with our membership and asked them to send us flyers. Um, that way we advertised, we sent them out through constant contact and just to keep that communication going. Uh, even though some businesses were closed down, we still got the word out and what restaurants were open, who would do a carry out and just to keep that um, communication going with all the businesses. And one of the things though too is, is that the Chambers uh, also puts on a lot of special events. I know we've got a big one coming up. We've got our the truck raffle, which is always my, one of my favorite deals going on. But talk about the special events that the Chamber puts on throughout the year as well. Well, coming up for us, we're doing our honors luncheon. And what that is, is the top 10 students from Princewood High School in Clearbrook. And then we also have, we, we're giving away six $1,000 scholarships, three to Princewood and three to Clearbrook. And so those students will be there so that we honor them. We get businesses um, to sponsor the students, sit with the student during lunch, and then we have the sponsor stand up and talk about the student, what they've accomplished in high school, what they're gonna do in college. I mean, some of these students already have associate's degrees. And it's just amazing um, the talent we have in our community with these uh, smart kids. So, and then, you know, college is not for everyone. So there's a lot of kids that are going to go to trade schools. So we, we like to honor them also. And then we yeah. have a car show coming up May 15th. It'll be in Stevenson Park. We didn't get to do it last year. So we're really excited about it this year. We've already got several people signed up. We've got vendor booths that um, people can sign up for. And two years ago, we had about 130 cars show up. And we almost had to turn people away because you can only put so much uh, cars out in the park. So 
Um, our committee does a great job. We put all the Mustangs together, all the uh, Corvettes together, and uh, it's one of the best car shows in the area. Yeah, I, I love that. And, uh, and if you're a car person, uh, hanging out in the park and seeing, particularly when it's a nice sunny day, uh, it is something uh, to check out and you don't want to miss that out. That's going to be coming up May 15th uh, here uh, as, as well. Uh, and then the win a truck, that's, uh, that was one that got, when you talk about COVID, it got delayed there for a while because that's normally done uh, around July 4th. We had to do that a little different this last year. Correct. Uh, the city um, decided not to do the 4th of July parade or the night event. So we just just kicked it off and said, you know, we're going to move it to Labor Day. And it's one of the best years we've had in a long time selling tickets. And it was a great success for us. And thank you, TJ, for the commercials that you helped us promote it. And the day of the event, um, having the ticket pulled on your show. Yeah, we, we did that live. And that was our first live event with the Friendswood Chamber. And it was it well, uh, well, the lady, uh, I remember too, when we went in and uh, the person had won, get to call her up and uh, uh, pretty excited. Uh, I think didn't believe anybody at first. Uh, <laughs> Nobody yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we'll we'll have some fun. I think next year, we maybe if they live close enough, we'll just go live and drive the truck like a publisher's clearinghouse in a way. Maybe we'll do something fun with it. Just drive up to their house or something like that. I don't know. We'll we'll yeah. see what we can do from that. Yeah. Again, but uh, if you're just joining us, folks, this is the Lex, Let's Go Expo presented by the Friendswood Chamber of Commerce. I'm your host, TJ Alds. Uh, and it's a virtual business expo. We have a whole lot coming up. We're going to be in a little bit telling you about how you need to handle insurance, how you need to handle things with, because we talk about virtual, going virtual like this. Uh, you know, you need needs in your house about your computers and social marketing, media marketing at the time. We'll have an expert on that coming up. We'll be talking about the real estate market, which is super hot, but what are the pitfalls of that? What are the strengths of that? And also how to fasten up to get your uh, get your mortgage. And we're gonna talk about your health too and how you can keep yourself healthy through all of this and maybe look at some different ways because you know when you're sitting in those chairs or you're or you're 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 slouching over you're always at the house during working during all this you maybe need to go see a chiropractor so we'll have rebel fitness on in a little while to talk to us about that uh as well uh carol again as we're carol marketel the president of the friendswood chamber of commerce and you can see their website there and you can just go to Google Friendswood Chamber of Commerce and it will pop up for you. Uh, and they're here to help you in any way. Carol, if somebody is considering and hasn't pulled it out about, maybe I want to locate a Friendswood uh, for my business, uh, they can call y'all for that information as well, correct? Correct. Uh, they go to our website. And um, yeah, we did a, last year, even though the COVID, we really had an outstanding year of new members. Because um, people just need to get the word out about their business. And um, we just um, do great work here. Yeah, and, I, and um, I have two yeah. a great staff here, Vice President Diane Hess and membership coordinator Joanne Edge. And they are always ready to help everyone. Yeah, and the staff is just wonderful here. Uh, you can they can help you out uh, all the way with uh, anything you need. And if you want to find out more about uh, the Friendswood Chamber of Commerce, you can go to the website friendswoodchamber.com. Friendswoodchamber.com is the site uh, to go to, and you see it up on your screen right now. Uh, a lot of events coming up uh, as as well. And if someone wants to get more involved uh, in the chamber, but maybe they're not sure what they want to do yet, what what are some of the suggestions you have for them, Carol, about what they should be doing uh, or what they could do to be more involved with the chamber and the community overall? One thing that we um, try to tell the members when they first join, the best uh, committee to get on is our ambassadors committee. We have about 40 ambassadors. Um, these are the... Um, they're just the vocal part of our community, our chamber. They go out and they meet the businesses face to face. If they can't get to the ribbon cutting for some reason, they stop by and welcome them into the chamber, give them a phone call and see what they have to offer. We also, the uh, ambassadors are just, they are a really great group. They're good. I've seen some great 
um, relationships that have started through that, through working in community. And they're, they're the ones that come out and they volunteer for um, a car show, any events that we have, they're the first ones that sign up on a, com a community um, working together. Uh, one of the things, too, folks, uh, throughout our show, this is the Let's Go Business Expo presented by the Friendswood Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and you can ask questions as we go to each of these sessions. So if you have questions about joining the chamber, Carol will be back on with us a little bit later, or, uh, or the uh, information that you'd like the questions answered to. We're going to have a series of experts on with us throughout the uh, morning. We we'll go until noon, by the way. And can uh, and can share that with you there. Uh, and I mentioned too, uh, we're glad to have a of sponsors on with us today. Uh, you may recognize the name just a little bit here uh, in the last name, uh, and, and, uh, but we're glad to have on Mike Markendale now uh, joining us uh, here. Uh, yes, uh, I, I usually joke that he's Carol's father. Uh, but uh, he's uh, actually that's her that's her husband. He's a great guy and has Marketelli Insurance, and who is one of our uh, sponsors of of the expo here today. And uh, Mike, glad to have you on. Thanks for coming on with us here uh, today. And you know, one of the things is people may not think about it uh, with everything that comes at us uh, left and right these days. You, you know, with everything that's going on, is that be insured and be ready to go? Can you talk about? how important and what's available to folks, uh, particularly on business and personal side uh, for them and their insurance needs? Well, um, first off, thanks for, for uh, hosting this event, uh, TJ. It means a lot to, to the community. It means a lot to, to the Friendswood Chamber and uh, potential members that uh, they are thinking about joining the chamber. And, and uh, we, we, we welcome anyone uh, to our chamber. Uh, we, we really do. And, Look, look forward to seeing you. Um, as far as insurance on the uh, personal side, of course you have to give auto, right? Auto, home, life insurance, things like that. And the business, in the business world, you um, have your your uh, business owner policies and general liability and um, and things like this. Uh, uh, TJ. Yeah, we're there. So okay. We still have you, Michael. <laughs> Any questions? No, no. no sorry, I, I, we're going. But how, how about you know, what do you mostly tell folks when they're looking in the market, uh, and and what which direction do you send them to? Because a lot of folks, it, it's it, it gets so detailed and gets in there. He, it, is it as difficult a process as people think, or is it something that uh, an expert like yourself can walk them through a little better? Well, each person, each situation, each family, each business obviously is different. Has to be approached that way. And uh, the assessment of each need and the needs of the whole package uh, is very important. Um, it's You can't do a one size fits all. Um, you have to approach it each, uh, each, each individual, each business, each family, uh, Approach approach it in an individual uh, and special way, and um, once you do your assessment and know exactly what uh, the 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 risk is, then you uh, start formulating a, a, a solution and present it uh, in a in a good fashion. Of course, the risk assessment and all this, um, we have a lot of good insurance um, um, agencies in Friendswood, a lot of good insurance agents. Uh, we're blessed with a really good insurance market, okay? And uh, and your 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 good insurance agents, your good insurance agencies will assess during a conversation and make it easy for the people to to gravitate toward uh, covering uh, covering covering them correctly, okay? That's that's kind of how it's done, uh, TJ. Uh, and you've been in the business since the the late '80s, uh, both the, not only here but also Louisiana. You're licensed in both states. But talk about COVID-19 particularly. How has your business been able to weather that storm? Well, um, before COVID, I, 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 since 1998, I've, I've been, once I saw the internet uh, situation and all, um, and the transformation of buying insurance, um, I kind of set myself out on a niche. 
to be right in between fully online and um, and, uh, and 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 in person. So with that, um, I'm I'm available. Like uh, for, for you know, you see my phone number. You can text for 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 a quote on a personal or a business uh, risk. Okay, and um, once COVID came, the the virtual uh, situation was was pretty much pretty much um, taken care of because um, what I do is I, I email the information I need and uh, talk to you over the phone uh, or text and uh, develop a, a plan for you and go ahead and do that by PDF and I send the PDF to your email and then uh, follow up with a phone call and talk about uh, the, the, the situation uh, to, to, to be insured, okay? That's pretty much uh, how I do it, and you know, and and occasionally people want to meet in person, and that's fine. But um, this has worked out really good for for the COVID situation. Um, uh, email, text, uh, talk over the phone, um, and it's it's been stream. I've, I've streamlined everything to to make it easy too, to where you know uh, people if they have to get up and go to the office of an insurance office or whatever, that they're missing time at work. Okay. And that's, that's not too cool. Right. The boss and everything. So from their cubicle, they can call or text or email, or whatever, um, and for a quote. All right. And I uh, develop everything like that. And without having to leave work, they can go ahead and get their quote. And if they want it, I can put it in force and uh, everything's done. Uh, um, uh, over the internet or text, wh whatever whatever meets their needs. Um, so that that's kind of been my transition in the COVID world, which I was pretty much there anyway. The 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 experience is you can buy over the internet. That's fine, and not even uh, talk to anyone or interact with anyone. But what this gives is the extra professionalism and the extra professional advice that they may need uh, to be covered correctly because uh, that's the most important thing. You don't want to just be paying premium and not really be covered correctly. You want to be covered correctly to where you're, you've maximized your premium dollars, okay? And transfer the risk correctly that, that is out there. Everyone lives with risk and through insurance, you transfer that risk with a premium. Yeah, with, I just wondered, I, I mentioned this when we started off the show, and those of you just joining us, this is the Let's Go Expo presented by the Friendswood Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Mike Markintel of uh, Markintel Insurance is on with us right now uh, and talking about things insurance-wise for you. Um, uh, <laughs> I had this question the, the other day, actually, from someone saying, you know, freezes, uh, pandemics, and storms. Can I get insurance for all of that? I get, uh, I'm not so sure that's available to everyone, but uh, I'm sure you've gotten some of those questions uh, that are out there. But how much has changed about what can and can get covered nowadays uh, with with insurance? Because it seems like we have something new that comes up every month. Well, different different companies, TJ. Um, have different um, marketing techniques for different years. So there's the things cycle, okay? Things cycle. Um, I, I've seen the cycle since uh, the Hurricane Hugo days back in the Carolinas. You remember that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, that was some days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that was the late 80s. So, um, and things cycle, um, finances uh, within insurance companies and insurance um um, uh, setups and the reinsurance market now very very intricate uh, details to that and um, um, so as things cycle uh, different companies right have, have a different appetite for what they want the risk that they want uh, and 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 with that um, some companies may not write certain things at certain times and other companies may, uh, be writing uh, that that risk very fine. So having access to those companies um, at any given time to a situation, and everybody's got a different situation, is very important. Um, and one company, uh, it, it 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 doesn't one one company doesn't have all the solutions. So having a diverse uh, 
a diverse opportunity to uh, tap into different companies is very important. Gotcha. Mike Markintel of uh, Markintel Insurance on with us, one of our sponsors of the Let's Go Expo. Mike, thanks for coming on and give us your expertise. Again, if you need some more advice uh, or information or just need some insurance, give them a call, 832-970-9464, or you can text them. You heard them say it right there. You can text them uh, right in the middle of there, and uh, we appreciate you coming on with us today here, Mike. Uh, we really do. Uh, and again, folks, uh, give them a call, 832-970-9464 uh, is the number. And glad to have you on here today, Michael. And, and I should uh, give, you, give you full credit. You started talking about this virtual expo idea when we were doing the drawing for the truck. Uh, last year uh, as well to go in there. So we we, we do appreciate it. Uh, and now we're going to switch bases a little bit here. Thanks for coming on this, Mike. We do appreciate it. Uh, and Thank now you. switching over a little bit to talk about something else that folks are in the need of uh, these days, and that's uh, better com computer services. Uh, and joining us now is uh, David Alcorn of nerds to go Computer Services. And uh, and again, uh, David, make sure you unmute your mic before we get going here uh, in a second uh, with you. But uh, this is the guy I know that those of us at I-45 now, we actually turn to him for our needs uh, as well. Uh, and David Alcor, Nerds to Go. How are you doing there today, David? I'm doing fine, TJ. Thanks for having me, man. Really. Uh, I, and as I said, we, we, we work with you as well. And do it. that's great because we can deal with someone local. Can you talk about just what are the needs you're seeing from businesses particularly what they need as they get themselves uh, trying to adjust to the changing market now uh, that's happened well, because um, of COVID 19. well one of the biggest things that people have having um a lot of uh challenges with are being able to work with not in the office so uh really working from home has become one of the biggest um hurdles for people and one of the biggest uh opportunities for us as nurse to go because uh we have solutions to allow people to work from home as if they're plugged into their offices. So uh, that's that's one of the biggest things. And the second one is just slow computers, man. Um, there have been so many slow computers coming to the store. And it's a lot because of all these Windows 10 updates. Computers have just been like been really bogged down. And so uh, we've been able to speed people computers up. Too. It's been um, it's been a lot of uh, a lot of different challenges, but um, it's just with the changing times and um, just all the all the new solutions that Microsoft is coming out with, and Apple, of course. Yeah, what, what, and, and you know, I may be putting you on the spot here, but what have you found to be the best for that home business to be able to uh, establish themselves? Uh, maybe necessarily not a home business as much uh, as you know, someone have work from home who would normally be working at their office. Um, so one of the biggest things uh, is. Like I say, a, a business grade desktop, um, they're not as expensive as people think they are. A business grade desktop, um, dual monitors, a camera, um, wireless keyboard and mouse, maybe a good microphone if the camera doesn't have one. And um, that's basically a, a work from home package, you know, and we, you know, and also just making sure that you have sufficient internet because um, you have sufficient internet until everybody's on it. And you don't realize that how, yeah, you don't realize how poor it is until you actually need it, you know, for example, like for your job. You're right. One of the things I always kind of point out to folks is it's kind of like uh, air conditioning. It can be freezing cold in a room when you're there by yourself, but you get an under 100 people in there, it's not going to be as cool. So you have to have the adjustments made uh, ahead of time uh, for it. But, it, you know, someone who may be working from home uh, now and realize that they're going to be was essentially telecommuting for the next year or so. Uh, what advice are you giving them? Because they may be worried about how much money they've got to spend uh, on this type of setup for themselves. Uh, does it have to be expensive or can they do it pretty simply and keep it less expensive? It's, it's a very simple setup. I mean, with all the connections that you know, we have all the parts um, on hand. So um, as soon as a person like places the order, we have, you know, the dual monitors, the, the wireless keyboard, the, if you, don't have an ethernet jack, you know, we have wireless cards, but it's, um, honestly, we can get all that done in like just a simple service call. We just need to make sure we have a space to plug into. And um, in that time, it also allows uh, for knowledge transfer because a lot of people, you'd be surprised how many people don't really know technology, you know, and um, and sometimes just some of the things that I feel that are, you know, not, I don't want to say simple, but certain things that I, 
that just come natural to me, um, others don't know. And so I actually, I make sure I carve out time to actually train them and teach them how, how to set it up. But it's a very simple setup. It's uh, very easy to get parts. And uh, we just set it all up for you and um, just make sure everything's working when we walk away. We don't, we don't want the, the customer to have to ever touch anything to make it work. When we leave, we want to make sure that everything is hands down done. Kind of like your, your max. <laughs> Yeah, right. And I should point out because uh, we uh, David does uh, work for us as well because uh, all of my guys work out in the, uh, all of my crew, I should say, work out in the field. So they need uh, laptops that can work uh, at high speed rate to, take, to handle video and the like. And I, I'll, and what I, this is the part I think I like is being able to call you up and do local. It's not going through a, a large franchise or something like that. So we should point that out. This is dealing with, uh, you know, you're not going to a big box store where you're in line or at a genius bar where you're waiting in line for the longest time uh, to get it done. Uh, on those terms, what, let me, practical advice uh, for someone who's at home, what do they need, just over the list of what they need to be able to set up a home-based communication and business office uh, for themselves for, as an okay. individual? So to set up a home business, um, you only really only really need one monitor, but I'm greedy. I like to have two, you know, dual monitor setups. But you need a desktop. You have to make sure that it has to be a it doesn't have to be a brand new desktop, but it has you have to make sure it has the uh, the proper specs. You know, an example is the processor. The processor is like your engine on the machine. If you need at least an uh, I know it's foreign, but an i five processor at least on your computer, so you can have optimum performance. And you have to make sure that the connections on the back of your computer are able to connect to your your monitors. You know, um, I've seen so many times where people have those old school blue VGA cables, and they have a um, HDMI, you know, a monitor that they can't plug it into their computer, you know. So that's one of the things you got to check out for. Uh, wireless keyboard and mouse, I am big on those because it's just wires everywhere, you know. Um, and um, as long as, um, as long as you don't use the, as long as you don't lose the USB uh, that connects them all, you're, you're good to go. And a good camera, you have to have a good camera because everything's about video calls now. Um, a good camera and a good microphone, you know. Like sometimes the cameras have microphones them, but um usually two for one is not the best but if, um, if you spend enough money you can't find a, a good two for one uh, and it, if someone comes into you and says i want to set up for that it is it, and just give an estimate whether they come to you or anyone uh for that type of service is it is it how expensive are we talking about here just the pure dollar wise of what it well, takes I to get yeah. Honestly, it's it's about this. It's similar to like just going up to a store, just buying a brand new computer. We we can get you all set up. Um, like I say, um, everything that I just said previously with uh, all the components, um, all the setup, all the training. For um, honestly, it would about nine, but between eight and nine hundred dollars, and that that entails the everything that that you need to go to the store and buy from monitors to like I said to the computer, to all the cables, all the network connections, and you also get training. You know, you get a you get a good knowledge transfer, and um, uh, our our nerds have some very very good knowledge transfer. A lot of things that a lot of people thought they knew and don't. It's it's a, it's so much easier to do things now, uh, and a, a lot of things have gotten much more shortcutted and a lot easier now that you know. Um, only the only way you would know is if you're in front of it all the time, and we happen to be in front of it all the time. Uh, and someone may have at home and a laptop they haven't used in a while. Uh, and you mentioned this when we were talking before, you know, the slow computers and the like. If if someone needed to upgrade, and you'd mentioned that uh, their speed, what what do you recommend? Uh, and I, I, we don't want to get too technical jargon here, so I'll, help me translate when we do this. Um, is is what do they need to do, kind of, to make sure they have the proper fit for what they need to do at home? Kind of like when you call me, hey David, I need this watch McCalla to do this thing on the jig. At the same time as this Duma fly, he does this. You know, yeah. So and this, is, like, this is a conversation David and I have had many times, and he knows this. I say it up front. I'm a content guy, and I always tell folks, I want the thingamajig to do the dual floppy and to do the thingamajig, and he translates that pretty well. So, so this is an actual real conversation uh, he's relaying to you here. And I th I'm not the only one that has that conversation with you, right? Yes, you are the only. One. You're special, TJ. Very much. <laughs> 
<laughs> I appreciate that. But so, but kind of go over that of, of, of what, you know, if folks have something at home, what do they actually need to get them right to the right level? So in most cases, um, of course, first thing I do is I, I inspect the machine because um, it's all about your, one of the hardest things to replace on a computer is the processor. So hopefully a good processor was purchased when the computer was purchased. And it doesn't, it could be 10 years ago, you know, 18 years ago. If the processor's still good, we can still restore that computer. One of the biggest things that we do is we replace hard drives. Um, they have the old technology hard drives, old style that many don't know about, but they have a new style that we install. And it's, it's pretty much your transmission, you know, um, you replace the old one with the new one in and um, all you all you notice is a faster computer. Everything is still the same. All the logins are the same. But we've had a lot of success with um, hard drive replacements. And honestly, when a, when a customer brings their computer in, if they have a mechanical hard drive, uh, that's one of the first things we, we move them to. And some people feel like their computers are sufficient, fast enough until they experience one after we uh, upgrade you know, and then they realize that, man, what have I been missing? Now, one of the things, too, is, is that social media has become such a big part of the marketing platform uh, for businesses now. Uh, as you look at this, you're, you know, I know you work on the technical side a lot, but you're also, for obviously, a small business owner. Your wife is a small business owner as well. Can you give some tips to some folks of how to market their firms using social media? Um, man, post daily. Uh, Post daily, post to your business page, post to your personal page. Um, as far as the business page, um, you must always um, display yourself as the expert, you know. Um, and just because you you think everyone knows it, that's not necessarily the case, you know. Um, so you, on your business page, you must display yourself as an expert. Talk about the newest trends. Talk about the an example for me is like the newest smart home technologies, you know, or maybe the you know how how we work with you know new tax law, not new tax laws, but like new tax software that uh, that will streamline, you know, work for CPAs, you know, a lot of referral tools, and things like that. Um, on your personal page, I I use I put about 20 to 30 percent of business stuff on there. But uh, for the most part, my personal page just shows the world that I'm human. You know, I have like specific family pictures and, you know, and, um, things that things that we do, like uh, out events and stuff like that, you know, things I do with the chamber. Um, you know, I, I make sure all that goes on my personal page. As far as LinkedIn, um, I continue, you know, uh, I post daily, sometimes twice a day. Um, I also, I do a lot of tagging. I make sure I tag businesses. Uh, once a week, I promote one of my clients. You know, I'll just, uh, I'll get some information from, from them. I'll tag them on there and I'll just talk about what they do, you know. Um, and thank you for being a trusted client of mine, you know. And um, another thing that I also do besides the, um, you know, besides set, um, the, uh, the customer showcase I also showcase my reviews. If I get a, I post a review that I've gotten at least once a week, I'll reformat it, put it on the page just to let customers know that, hey, we are we are really excited for you. We're, we're happy that you feel this way and thank you for sharing your experience with Nurse to go with, with the world, not just the community. It's always, it, it, it's just yeah. a digital version of taking care of your customers, right? It's the yes, same yes. way it works uh, there. And I, I always tell folks on the social media side uh, of things, and that's actually the world we deal in, uh, is that what you can do is, is just as if you were going down the block talking to someone, treat it the same way. You are you know interact with those people, talk with them on a number of basis. Uh, you see someone make a comment on your page, don't let that comment sit by itself forever. Go in and engage them. Even just to say, hey, thank you for making a comment uh, and we want to engage with you. For those of you just joining us, we're in the middle of the Let's Go Expo presented by the Friendswood Chamber of Commerce. I'm your host, TJ Alt. On with us right now is one of our experts talking about uh, needs you may have or, or the businesses may have uh, computer-wise and technology-wise in your homes. Uh, outside of computers and stuff, what other technology and cameras and microphones, what other technology maybe people are overlooking that you think that they need to make them more effective uh, in, in the business world? A strong wireless connection. A strong wireless connection is very, very big. Um, a, a lot of people when they when they install their systems, they'll just put a have their you know a Comcast business router. They'll just pop it in. And they'll route on that Wi-Fi, you know, um, the entire time. And every time you know you get to a place, the majority of people talk about how weak their Wi-Fi is, and then you look at it, you see, well, it's in this metal box, you know, with um, you know, it's in this metal box, still shut. You know, of course, you got two bars, you know, um because that's just 
wireless is radio waves, you know, and if it's behind metal, the waves won't get out and it, it just becomes very challenging to have a strong wireless signal. So we've been actually um, putting in our own um, wireless solutions, you know, we'll still piggyback off of maybe the Comcast or AT&T router, but we'll strategically place ceiling mounts um, throughout buildings, on properties, you know, uh, we, we have one client that has that has four bars of, of wireless signal across five acres just because they they, they have chickens on the um, on the far end of the property and they the cameras weren't working so they couldn't see the eggs hatch. I mean, we've we run into many um, unique uh, opportunities and um, we've been able to address all of them. But wireless is very 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 big and um it's it's one of the things that a lot of people move into because some computers don't even have Ethernet ports on there, you know, and so you you have to rely on the wireless uh, solutions that are out there. And if they're not strong, I mean, you're you're just you're back where you started. It, and one of the maybe more of the mistakes folks make, particularly if you have a home office, is you get that router uh, and it's not the best looking thing you want to have, and they'll put it on a lower shelf in another room where it's not visible. That's actually not the most effective way of doing things for you, right? No, not not if it's your sole source of wireless communication. You know, um, it needs to be in, a, in an open space. Maybe a, I'm just let's say you're in a home. It's it needs to be in the in the dining room. If you're in a small business, it needs to be in the, the most open lobby area. If that's your sole source of wireless. Now, if you have a a solution, you know, a wireless solution outside of that, which is what we you know install, um, you can stage it where you want to, and then you just you have nicer wall mounts, plug mounts, you know, um, more more aesthetically pleasing devices that also provide you a much stronger signal. And they have a solution that we use called meshing. Uh, meshing just means that you have all these devices strategically placed through a building and wherever you are, you pick up the strongest device. Your signal, it just picks up off the strongest device. You know, so it, it just, it makes sure that your reliability, your resiliency and your uptime is is, is unreal. Uh, David Alcorn, nerds to go. Uh, thanks for coming to all this and providing your expertise here today. Uh, David, we do appreciate you. Uh, here today, and uh, as I said, we use them uh, as well. We should point out he's a member of the Friendswood uh, Chamber of Commerce. Thanks a lot, David. We appreciate you. Hey, thanks for having me, TJ. I'll uh, talk to you soon, I'm sure. All right, yeah, the later this afternoon. I think we've already talked about that too, so <laughs> we appreciate you coming in here. Uh, and uh, so, again, you're joining us for the Friendswood Chamber of Commerce's Let's Go Expo. One of the things is you may be like most people when you're sitting at home and you're getting cramped up and uh, and and your back's not in the greatest of shape uh, of this at all. Uh, and uh, introducing to you now one of our, our, our sponsors uh, from the, and it's uh, Rebel uh, uh, Fitness and uh, Mobility and Fitness. And they make sure I do that right. And uh, uh, Dr. K is on with us now. Uh, Frank Thomas is, uh, is on with us. Dr. Frank Thomas, and how, how are you doing, Dr. K? Good to have you on with us here today. Uh, good morning, TJ. Thanks for having me. Uh, every day I wake up is a good day. Yeah, that's uh, and that's always a good line to have there too. And you know, this is probably part of COVID nineteen that no one really thought much about. Is that when you're you even asked me you when you and I were talking yesterday? Is that you were checking out my chair to make yeah. sure that it was a chair? Talk about that. I mean, just what the food be, but folks that have to work from home and like what are, what kind of your tips to them? What they should be working, uh, work how they should be working, and what they should do to keep themselves mobile and fit. Yeah, so that's uh, a really big component that I came across uh, last year. Um, obviously, everyone's starting to transition into working from home, but uh, you and I can attest to, uh, you know, uh, furniture at home isn't the same as furniture at the office. So, you know, spending eight hours at your dining room chair isn't the same as being at your desk at your workstation. Um, and not even all workstations are the best uh, scenario to begin with. So you're already kind of setting yourself up for a disadvantage. And so, you know, a lot of the stuff that, uh, you know, is coming across in the research now is people are developing, you know, these chronically, you know, tight hips or glutes that are like turning off because they're just sitting in bad furniture and long uh, time periods uh, trying to do the same amount of work. Uh, I've also, uh, you know, as part of my, uh, you know, expertise. Uh, I've also worked from home and uh, there's actually research out there that shows that we're more productive uh, when we work at home because we somewhat feel like it's a luxury. So we kind of go the extra mile um, and, you know, sit at our stations uh, to make up the difference. 
Now, you're, you're a little bit different uh, in how you take your approach than most people would uh, maybe realize uh, that, you know, someone says, oh, the chiropractor had my appointment at a certain time. That's not the case when it goes to Rebel Mobility and Fitness. That's a little bit different setup for you guys, right? Right. So we we're doing this approach even uh, pre-COVID, but it just so happened, uh, you know, when COVID hit, uh, we we're able to uh, offer solutions that people were looking for. So, um, you know, we do one on one appointments for every appointment through the door. Um, whenever you come into my uh, clinic, I have two very uncomfortable chairs in the front because no one should be waiting around to see me. You know, if your appointment's at 10, I'm meeting you at 10 o'clock and we're going in the back to start working. Um, so there's no, you know, sitting around with, you know, strangers or, or other clients or patients. And, uh, you know, especially with COVID, uh, when that hit, you know, people were very uncomfortable about leaving their house, too. That's that's acceptable. And so we managed to transition to to modify, you know, our approach with uh, telehealth services. Now, you know, I think at the end of the day, everyone's looking for a, a real human connection. And so, you know, as, as the year went on, people were kind of getting more comfortable, uh, you know, venturing outside of the, their own personal bubbles. Um, and so, you know, we just so happen to have a business model that provides that for people. You know, they're, they're basically seeing just myself, you know, the whole time they're here for whatever service we're doing, whether it's a 30 minute appointment or a one hour block. Uh, and also, too, you have something that's called the, uh, it, it, in, it, I had not heard of this until you mentioned the I3 model. Uh, can you talk yeah. about that, how that works? Because yeah. this is fascinating to me, what, how you explained this to me before. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I, I, I draw out everything in the office. So I, I'm not an art major, so excuse me. <laughs> so this, is, this is the I3 model. And basically what it starts with is incomplete mechanics. And so basically you might have a loss of range of motion or loss of strength, or maybe you're moving well and you're pretty strong, but you don't control it so much. And so that leads into an incident, which is basically micro stress or trauma on the body. Now you might do that for a while, might be a hundred times, might be a thousand times, but eventually if you ignore it, you're going to develop an injury. So usually whenever people come in here, this is what they're seeing me for. They're saying, ouch, my, you know, my hip hurts. I don't know why nothing happened. My hip just hurts. Um, and so, you know, just like any other clinic, we're trying to decrease pain, increase range of motion so that they're feeling better. But this right here is what I'm world class at. And basically what we do to, uh, you know, get people mobilized and get a recovery plan in place so that they can take care of themselves at home long term. You know, one of the best things I can do is, uh, you know, help fill in the gaps and educate people on how they can be self-sufficient so that they don't need to come see me. They don't need to give me their money. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, those gaps, it was, you mentioned the gaps. Anyone can, can what, what do you recommend to folks that they can do right now uh, that they could make them improve their health uh, and their mobility? Yeah, so uh, this is a real easy win, actually. It ties into a lot of different things. Um, the last two years, I've been a real big proponent of uh, ribcage depression and diaphragmatic breathing. And so especially with COVID, we saw like there's an increased level of stress. So this can help with that, too. Um, but basically, by increasing our diaphragmatic breathing, um, we can get mobility in the ribcage, which is important because the body wants options to move. Uh, but that can also help with, you know, simple things like when we're doing more functional activities to brace the spine so that it doesn't shift out of position and, you know, run the risk of an injury. Now, you get a physiological response because you get all that great oxygen into the lower lobes of your lungs and get good gas exchange. And that helps with performance. Um, but also, if you're diaphragmatic breathing, then you're not using so much an overstress of your accessory muscles, which usually we see a lot of with people who are living in a state of fight or flight or stress. So, you know, number one thing I tell you to do is, you know, just kind of take a minute, reset the clock, take a deep breath, enjoy your moment. Yeah. It, it, taking time is the most important thing I think in all of this. Uh, and you take your time, as you said, it's a one-on-one -on -one when folks come in uh, and get it set up. And I guess that's in many ways, that's what sets you apart. Uh, from other chiropractors in the field? Yeah, uh, you know, I've worked in uh, other great clinics and, uh, you know, we 
did a lot of great work. Um, my business model is really based around uh, my training as a certified uh, strength and conditioning specialist, a corrective exercise specialist, and as a state designated doctor for the state of Texas. So I, I basically take my clinical expertise and my uh, performance-based exercise-based uh, expertise, and I just mesh them together to help people move well. And uh, joining us, uh, as I said, Dr. K from Rebel uh, Mobility and Fitness. Uh, and uh, one of the things to you know is that uh, when folks go to you is – uh, they may not realize this is that you, one of the things is, is that you're out of network on insurance. Can you talk about how that actually works and how it actually may be better for them uh, in the long run? Yeah. So um, again, for years and years, uh, I, I literally fought with insurance. I was a patient advocate uh, fighting with insurance to get simple things approved that, you know, my patients needed, you know, six additional sessions of therapy or even just six to start therapy. And so um, I realized that there's, you know, a fundamental gap in what, you know, patients need and what I can provide. And so by being out of network, it's actually a benefit to everybody because uh, a lot of people have high deductibles or, you know, maybe uh, they're not quite sure uh, what they're going to end up paying because two months down the road, they're going to get a surprise bill for all the therapy they've done. Whereas with my approach, um, you know, everything that we're doing is evidence based, but if you come in for knee pain, we're not just getting approved for therapy on the knee and ignoring the rest. You know, we're taking a full body approach so that we can address what's going on above and below the knee pain to make sure that we're addressing those uh, mechanics and there's less stress overall, better outcome long term. Um, the, the reality is, uh, you know, there, there's no surprises. You know, you're not going to get a surprise bill for me two months down the road. Um, we're just going to come in, commit our time to each other, and then get better, move better. Gotcha. Uh, Dr. K, thanks so much for being on with us uh, here today. Thanks for being one of our sponsors of the uh, Virtual Business Expo. That we're at the Let's Go Expo here at the Friendswood Chamber of Commerce. Uh, if you want to find out more Rebel Mobility and Fitness, rebelmobilityfitness.com. They're also online, uh, Facebook and Instagram, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I put out uh, constant uh, information out there. It's really just to give yourselves perspective. If you want to learn about your movement habits and how your body works and what you want to do to kind of take care of yourself at home, just go through the information I put out there. It's all free. It's uh, I, I do all the heavy lifting of reading and I, I try and break it down uh, into you know bite-sized chunks for you guys. Gotcha. Dr. K, thanks for coming on with us. We do appreciate your time here today. Fascinating to learn more about uh, what, what you do uh, out there. It is it is different, folks. Uh, we had a good chat yesterday, and hopefully you learned a little bit more. And you can get more details from him uh, by going to uh, his website, Facebook page, or Instagram. Thanks a lot, Dr. K. We appreciate thanks, you coming on with us. Okay. Uh, we transition now on the Let's Go Expo. You know, talk about being uh, a mobile, maybe able to adjust. If you're a business owner or even trying to start a business, you have to be able to adjust at any given time. And to be able to do that, you need to have a good, solid business plan. And uh, someone joining us now that knows all about that, Lindsey Vaughn, Remax American Dream. Yes, it's real estate, but that's also a business owner. And uh, she knows the ins and outs of business planning. Lindsay, thanks for coming all this. One of our uh, committee members too, we should point out uh, for the Let's Go Expo for the Friendswood Chamber of Commerce, uh, who really came up and really worked hard to put this together. So one, thank you for that. Uh, but Lindsay, uh, talk about what, let me just ask you right off the top, what's the most common thing that folks don't think about when they're getting their business plan together? Working capital. They're not creating a budget. A lot of business owners start to put things together and they're not really looking at the whole picture. Um, there is a lack or there's failure that happens when you have that lack of business equity. And a lot of business owners have a really great idea, but the execution of it isn't there because they have that lack of funding. So it's, it's that budget. And when they have that budget that they have to get together, uh, how do you suggest that they put that together properly? So for me, I've been doing business coaching for probably 17 years now. A lot of what I do as a, as a broker owner is create these business plans. And what I have figured out is that when a business owner goes 
into business for themselves, the very first thing that they lack is direction. There's a lot of drive there. So they have a lot of idea, but there's no action behind the idea. They don't know how to execute. So the very first thing that I do is I bring them in and we start talking about like, why, why do you work? Why does anybody really work? And I get, you know, surface answers where we work for money. Well, okay, great. But what does that money really get us? If you made 10 or 15,000 extra dollars this year, what would that mean to you as a business owner? And you have to create a why, a why I go to work every day that has a passion link. Because then once you become passionate to those ideas, you become passionate to the things that you want to go for, you have less of a, um, restriction. So you don't think that, oh, I can't go do that, or I don't want to do that, or I'm not going to foolproof my business. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. But really what they're saying is the tough have a really strong why. Why am I going to work? Is it put kids through college? Do I want to buy a ski boat? Do I want to get out of debt from all of the slave from the money that I borrowed? What is it that you're really going to work for? And once you have figured that out and you're passionate about it, then we start to create the who, the what, the when behind in that business plan. So say I decide I'm going to work because one, I've got to eat. So we've got to put that in the budget. I've got to put a roof over my head. I've got to have an automobile. I have to have some medical insurance, those things. But what are the bigger things? Because if I just work to break even, and that's not really driving me to be a business owner. So then I'm going to go through and I'm going to decide, okay, well, I want to, at the end of the year, I want to have $20,000 in savings. I want to be able to give back to my charity. I want to be able to promote other business owners through the chamber of commerce. I want to be able to do those things and not feel guilty about it. So now I have to figure out how much is that going to cost? I break that cost down into a transaction base. So for real estate agents, it's how many homes do you have to sell? But if you're in any type of business, most of them are sales. How many bank accounts do I have to open up if I'm a banker? How many loans do I have to do if I'm a loan officer? How many tickets do I have to sell if I own a skating rink? There, there is a cost associated with almost every business. So you have to figure that out. Then you have to figure out, okay, if I have these goals and these plans and these strategies, this GPS that I'm creating, and my why, now I need my goals. So my goal is I want X, Y, and Z. But now I need a plan behind that. And the plan is where I come in as a business coach. And we sit down and we have two or three daily actions that we take. And we say, okay, look, your goal is super specific. We promote SMART goals. SMART goals mean that they're um, specific, measurable, obtainable, um, uh, oh my goodness, relevant and timely. So one of the best goals that anybody ever wrote was we're going to get a man to the moon and back by the end of the decade. And I think it was safe. We're going to get a man to the moon and back safely by the end of the decade. That is a very smart goal. So as a business owner, if you want to go from point A to point B and you have this gigantic goal, how do we get there? And then you decide, OK, well, do we have a skill problem or a will problem? If it's the will problem, we need to go back and revisit the why. Because if the why isn't strong enough, when you have things like Isladon, Harvey, pandemic, you won't keep going. You'll put your head in the sand. So in 20, in March of 2020, when the pandemic happened and they said, okay, look, you can't go to work anymore. You might be essential. You might not be essential. We pivoted and I called all my coaching clients and I said, okay, look, here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a new plan. We're going to pivot. Yeah, we didn't put pandemic in the business plan, but we also didn't put zombie apocalypse. Guess what's in 2021's business plan? Zombie apocalypse. Because we want to make sure that you are completely ready. You can do everything that you need to do. And it all starts with beliefs. So do you believe in yourself? So I have some fundamental beliefs that I believe as a business owner. And one of them is time is your only limit. What are you willing to commit to into your business time-wise? Because if you're willing to commit 10, 12, I don't care how many hours it is, but you have to fully work during those times. And think, I have some clients that we have a hard time with them realizing their value and articulating their value because they don't know it. So we spend some time really thinking about what is your value prop for your business? What makes you unique? Because chances are there's probably two or three or four other people right here in your ballpark that do the exact same thing. But what makes you unique? What makes you the best you that you can be? 
And then we go in and we dive in and how to figure out how to articulate that to a customer so that they can believe it too. Because then you don't have, well, you should do it for cheaper or um, why should why should you do it when I can get six other people to do it? Those kind of things. So we have a focus is the key to success is one of my other big business things that I try to teach people. If you focus on it hard enough, you'll go get it. Some people don't aim for anything and hit it with amazing accuracy. So when you're having a business plan, you need to have that focus and look at it every day. I, I wanted to, you talked about you know valuing your time. That's also one of the things I think a lot of small business owners uh, make a mistake on is that they want to get that business, they want to get it in so fast, but when they establish kind of a benchmark so low, sometimes they underprice their value that even a year, two years, they're still struggling to make income. And the reason to be in business is satisfy yourself, but also make income. And so, how, and, and so it's different for different markets. No doubt about it. You've got to figure that out. Uh, but what do you say to folks that when you evaluate that, say, you're really selling this for too low, there is that pull that says, no, no, I'll lose these clients if I don't do that. But you can make up for that in many ways, right? Just by doing your job and doing it as well as you and do the finding those unique things you said, what makes you different? Yeah. So there's two things. One, you live in a world of abundance. You live in a world of abundance. So if you have customers that are asking you to come down, not valuing you the way that you need to be need to be valued, you need to realize that. The second thing that you need to realize is that there is a win-win or no deal in business. I should not have to lose in order for you to win. I should not have to sell my product to you at a lesser amount just so that you can go down the road. But at the same token, I if you have to lose in order for me to win, that also doesn't work. So definitely need to have that win-win attitude, win for everybody. And you need to remember that you live in a world of abundance. So if that customer comes and says, hey, I'm gonna go because you won't do X, Y, Z, then you're gonna get a next customer and you don't have to deal with that because you know your value and you can articulate it. Uh, and if folks wanted to find out more about business planning and business coaching that you provide, how do they do so? They just email me, it's lindsay at vaughncoaching.com or they can call me on my cell phone, which is 281-610-8353. And we have about 50 clients that we coach monthly that are not just real estate agents, they are all businesses all the time. Yeah, I, these are all tips no matter what type of business you're in, uh, if particularly small business owners, uh, you need to hear from, and hopefully we've, uh, you've learned some stuff. I, I, I have, I've taken down, I don't know how many notes here so far uh, from you, Lindsay, that uh, have been great. And, um, and I do encourage you folks to go ahead and call, text. Uh, we'll put the number up on screen here in just a little while when we come back and talk to Lindsay in just a little while. Uh, on this as well, because it's uh, it's exciting stuff on uh, there. So I appreciate your time here uh, today, Lindsay. Uh, and thanks for coming on with us. And uh, we'll have you on here a little bit because we're going to switch topics with you here in a little while. You're going to have three segments, I guess, when this is all said and done. We'll be talking about the real estate market, how hot it is, and should you be in it in one way or another as a seller or a buyer. And we'll be talking with you about that along the way as well. Although we're going to switch over to uh, and, and, and stay with me, Lindsay, here a little bit. We're having, I can tell, some technical difficulties uh, with our next sponsor, Smoothie King, uh, located at 140 West Parkwood. Uh, I was about to make some kind of transition. You talk about a small business that knows their value, and there it is. There's Trenton now. Hey, Trenton, how are you, man? So, glad to have you on. And uh, it, uh, Trenton Thomas, Smoothie King of Friendswood. And uh, how are you doing today, partner? Hey, I'm good, CJ. How are you? Uh, it's great. I, I talk about uh, small business and knows what they're doing. Smoothie King has, across the nation, has helped many people get small businesses going. Talk about how you got into the into the field. Well, to be honest with you, CJ, uh, Smoothie King was my very first job when I was 15 years old. Uh, then, you know, you look up 15 years later and had the great opportunity to actually open the store. Um, so we're, we're excited, excited about being a part of the community. And uh, yeah, we got started here uh, about six months ago, right in, in COVID. So we had a great opportunity to apply some of those same practices Lindsay just talked about. Uh, and then even right behind us here, you can see our brand lives by the standard. What's your purpose, right? So she talked about working capital and what's our purpose. And we implemented it on every single thing that we did and why we're here in the community. 
It, it, it means to ask you, I mean, you said you opened up in the pandemic and, you know, those decisions don't have to happen as quickly on there. As you were getting get closer to that opening up and you and we kept seeing the extension of the COVID-19 going along, at some point were you saying to yourself, oh, what have I got myself into? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, coming in during that time was definitely challenging. But just with any business, just as a lot of these small business owners know, just as a lot of our community knows, you know, we're, we're, we're stronger when we get face those challenges. And, uh, and so we just had to step up to it, right? So we just looked at different ways that we could help ourselves and help the community during the pandemic. Uh, we were an essential business as a restaurant and a healthy option for folks. So it really turned out, you know, as a, as a good challenge for us and something that was able to really get us out there with the, into the community with the Chamber's help. And, and so folks may not be familiar, uh, that may not be familiar, and I don't know who wouldn't be, but this with Smoothie King, what all do you guys offer there? Uh, so we, we basically try to be an essential portion of everybody's health and fitness journey. Uh, so we offer mainly smoothies, right, in the name, but also healthy retail options and, and, and as well as healthy proteins and items just to keep inspiring people to live a healthy and active lifestyle. Uh, so anything that you would want from smoothies to retail goods to protein powders, we offer that here. But mainly our blends are what sets us, sets us apart. It gives you a meal or a snack to take and fuel your day, to fuel your purpose uh, and help you go out and rule the day. Of course, one of the things, you know, you know we, we, a lot of people joke, they call it the COVID-15, I guess. You know, those that have been moving around a lot. So what do you recommend that I come in like, as soon right. as I'm done here? I think I put on the COVID-50, uh, actually, when I did this. is what, what should I be coming down? As soon as I'm done here, when I come by Smoothie King today, what should I be ordering from you to really help me kind of keep me feeling good and full, but not at the same time, not, uh, 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 you know, I can start losing some weight along the way? That's a, that's a great question. If you come out today, uh, you'd want to come and get one of our, our, our Slim and Shrimp smoothies. Uh, which it has a, has a great balance. It's a meal replacement smoothie. It'll get you that protein you need, get you that health and fitness that you need. Uh, but we also have other blends from our wellness blends, uh, as well as our fitness blends for if you're coming off of a workout or your wellness blends, if you just want to continue to stay active and healthy throughout the day. Uh, on with us right now is Trenton Thomas, uh, the owner of Smoothie King Friendswood, located on 140 West Parkwood. Uh, and, you know, I got to tell you, it, it, it's something else. I, I've been so amazed when I hear someone, when you said your first job ever was at a Smoothie King, and now you have one. Can you talk about That's right. It, was, it is a franchise setup, and there are a lot of successful business owners who have gone to the franchise world. Can you talk about what you had to think about uh, when you decided to go down this path? Because uh, I know the company setup is, is they, they don't just say, okay, here, come by the franchise and go. They actually really get you from point A to point B where you learn all the ins and outs of the operation, right? Yep, that's right. Yeah, so we started off, uh, the process was, was a, a long one, you know, just making sure that we really believed in the brand uh, was the essential thing, making sure that we believed in the brand, believed in the purpose of what we were doing. You know, once you align with that, with the brand, everything else comes to uh, comes to full circle. Uh, so we were able to, to work with them throughout the process, pick our location. And we really fell in love with the Friendswood community uh, due to all the fitness locations that were around here, the community that we saw and everything like that. Gotcha. All right. And what is it, uh, let me ask you, I'm going to put you on the spot here. What specials are you guys running right now? So as soon as we're done with this and we'll stay on with this, but as soon as we're done, what do they need to do to come on down and what type of specials you got running for? Yeah, if they come on down, I'm going to put this flyer on you here. If they come on down, we're now promoting our stretch and flex smoothies. Uh, and so what we're currently offering now, if you come in, uh, you get our stretch and flex smoothies. You can get a sample from us. And then also during this season, it's going to be our health and wellness. So you get if you download our healthy rewards app and order a wellness smoothie, you get two dollars off. Uh, so th this month is our wellness month. We're promoting health and wellness throughout every community. And then our stretch and flex smoothies. If you haven't gotten one of these in the mail and you're in the Friendswood community, then I'm not doing my job. But you come in, you can grab one of these flyers from us, take it and go and rule the day with the, with the, with your new favorite blend. 
Yeah, make sure you get the app. And if you drink a few of those, you can do just like you saw Gabby Douglas do right there and get all flexible out there. Uh, it's great when you have the Olympian like Gabby Douglas uh, helping you guys out promote that. Uh, Trent Thomas, the owner of Smoothie King, for it's with. Looking for, I'll see you in just a little bit when we get wrapped up here because uh, I do love the smoothies there. I know it looks like I drink too many of them, but I love them. Uh, and they're great. So thank and Trent, thanks for sponsoring this. And thank you for what you're doing in Friendswood. We're glad to have you in the city. Uh, in this community and being a part of it, uh, not just the doing business, you're, you're active and trying to make sure everyone's in, enjoying themselves in this community as well. We appreciate you. Okay, thank you, CJ, I appreciate it. Uh, Trenton Thomas, the Smoothie King, on with us uh, here this afternoon. Check him out, 140 West Parkwood. Uh, great business, and uh, as I said, uh, he can give you some business tips too uh, when, you, when you get going. Uh, of through your day. Uh, now, as we headed to our next transition here, guys, we're going to be talking. I told you about real estate is a hot, hot market right now, and uh, and it is uh, something that folks have got to kind of figure out. All right, I'm interested in buying, uh, but you need to be able to walk through that and understand. Okay, I need to get a loan, and doing that, and joining us now is maybe one of the best uh, uh, loan advisors that are around. Dan Garza of Amtex uh, Loans. And Dan, thanks for coming on. Well, also, by the way, should point out, he is one of our uh, uh, committee members that helped put this all together. Dan, thanks for coming on with us. We appreciate your, your expertise. Uh, first, let's talk a little bit about what your company does for folks so they can understand. Sure. Uh, well, first, let me say I'm honored that you would have me on. I appreciate it very much. Um, well, needless to say, what we do is uh, help people acquire mortgage loans. Typically, it's to buy a house, whether it's to own or occupy or maybe as an investment property. In addition to that, we um, we help people with refinance loans here lately. Mostly, it's been to lower interest rate um, because rates have never been lower. I mean, it's, that's a whole topic all by itself. We can go on and on about just that. Um, and then sometimes people need to pull equity out to do home improvements or for you know other purposes. So. It's a full spectrum uh, offering of loans through a variety of wholesale funding sources, and we can go any direction on those topics uh, if you want, TJ. Yeah, and one of the things too is that you know, we, I wanted to ask you about is folks may be looking at the, the mortgage market right now, and we saw interest rates take a, a, a tick upwards here lately, uh, as we saw the economy starting to come back uh, and as COVID has progressed and we're seeing more of the vaccines out there and the like, where, where does it sound like, what's, what's kind of the best rate folks are going to get right now? What can they expect when they're trying to, when they're shopping around for a mortgage? That's a good question. Um, currently, well, currently conventional rates, uh, if you look on most sites that are offering honest rates, because sometimes they're not, but uh, expect to see three and a quarter thereabout on a 30 year, 15-year uh, rates are typically lower by as much as a half, so perhaps 2.75 or 2.625 is pretty common. Um, but it's important to note there's more that goes into what rate you get than just the basic quote, uh, because interest rates uh, are driven by other factors like your credit score, for example. They're also driven by the amount you're borrowing. Uh, they're driven by the purpose of the loan. Is it for an owner-occupied property or a non-owner? So, um, and then for veterans, there's rates that are even lower than can be had uh, on the conventional level. Uh, not long ago, uh, I helped a customer refinance his 30 year VA loan down to 2.25. I mean, that's almost free money. That's almost unbelievable. But the truth is rates have been so low for so long and you're right, they have increased some here lately. And there's, well, I'll get to that in a second. Um, my point is a lot of people have taken advantage of the current market uh, and rates have been so low for so long that a lot of folks don't remember when rates were at 10 and 11 percent, which was uh, a few years back. Uh, we've really been spoiled. I'll just say that. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is one of those things where you can say, oh, they're going so high, but it's kind of comparing it uh, a lot of times of when you know, it was, it was a much higher uh, uh, rate out there. What's the one thing, you know, uh, one of the things is we're seeing a lot of first home home time, uh, home time buyers, first time home buyers, I should say, uh, coming into the market now. Uh, and uh, what is what is the one thing that you, your first piece of advice to those folks when they're gonna be trying to shop for their first mortgage? 
Uh, that's a good question too. You know, on uh, on my website, I say on the very front page, there's no shortage of information on the internet about mortgage loans. In fact, there's so much information that what people need is help cutting you know through the clutter, and uh, and, and there's uh, disinformation unfortunately. And there's claims about what rate that can be offered when the person listing that ad sometimes knows better than that. And it's all about making the phone ring, of course. But to your question about what advice I would give to a first time home buyer, um, the first thing I would advise them to do is take a look at their credit. You can get a free copy of your credit report on annualcreditreport.com. And uh, if there's any uh, anything on the report that needs to be uh, improved upon, then I can help with that. I can help guide on that. But I would first ask them to take a look at their credit. Uh, the next thing I would do is ask them to, um, to not run out and buy any big ticket items. I can't tell you, well, I, I've learned to coach my borrowers on not to do it, but in years past, I've had borrowers actually apply for a mortgage loan and then run out and buy a new whatever. Uh, car. And uh, and that car purchase, of course, affects their overall debt to income number and can really throw things into a tailspin, so to speak. Um, what else would I tell them? I would tell them that a lot there's a misconception that it takes 20% down to qualify for a mortgage. I'm surprised that exists in this day and age. But truth is, on an FHA loan, you can get uh, into a home with as little as three and a half percent. Some conventional programs actually offer similar at 3% down. Uh, granted, if you're trying to get into a property with a very low down payment, uh, the lenders are going to expect other aspects of your uh, loan application to, uh, to be really good. Good job stability, good credit, um, and so on. So yeah, first time home buyers are some of my favorite people to work with. It really, really warms my heart to see a, a young couple getting started, maybe starting a family, get into their first home. Uh, and of course, also what we're probably seeing a whole lot more now are not necessarily the first time homeowners, uh, but the folks who have been established, but they have decided I need a bigger home um, because of work. Because uh, I know for my wife and I, for example, I'll give you an example of this is that both of us were working uh, from home more often and both needed home offices. Uh, so we needed to have a house that was big enough that we could convert one room into an office and another uh, and an office office was already there uh, when, when the house we picked. But that what what are you telling folks as they went, OK, I'm in this home. I've been here maybe 10 years or so. Now I'm ready to get something bigger. Uh, that's that's a, that's a different process when you already one own one home and now you got to sell that and get ready for your next mortgage. How do you walk them through that process and what's your recommendations on those? Another good one. Uh, the current market we're in is somewhat unique uh, because uh, it's pretty widely known that the market's on fire. In fact, I think you said it at the outset. And uh, so someone looking to sell their home might be concerned about whether they can find find their next home. They won't have any trouble selling the one they're in, in all likelihood. Finding the next one may be a bit of a challenge. Um, but then again, especially among second and third time home buyers, it's not uncommon for me to help people buy their next home without having to sell their current home. It doesn't, I mean, it's not everybody, but uh, with interest rates this low, uh, you know, you, you borrow even a quarter of a million or 300 grand at 3%, uh, that payment is uh, is low, is, is super low. It's the same payment that you would have been paying on a loan for two thirds that amount. So uh, I guess my message is sometimes people can own two homes simultaneously and then once they're in their new one, worry about getting the old one sold. Um, otherwise, if a person has bought a home or two already, they're kind of familiar with the process, uh, which is another good segue all by itself, because a lot of times people aren't prepared uh, uh, for what to expect when it comes to applying for and going through the mortgage loan process. It generally takes three weeks to 30 days. and. Uh, at the end of it, most will tell you they were surprised at the kind of detail and the kind of information they were asked to provide. It's a lot. And it, it, it is a lot. Yeah. It is a lot. Yeah. And anything yeah. that's not explained, you'll be asked to explain. A large deposit, for example. Uh, right. So, anyway. Yeah, and it, it seems like there's something a little bit different uh, that comes up each time, uh, too. And that's, I, I guess, would be a piece of advice is always prepare yourself 
for the next question. And it's not always going to be the same. It's not a cookie cutter process uh, along the way. There's a lot of procedures yes, you go through, but it's it's different each time, actually, as I found out in the last couple of years uh, right. of going around. Uh, Dan, stick around with us. Uh, we're going to have you and Lindsay both back on here as we talk about the hot real estate market here on the on the flip side of this now. Uh, and now I get to do a little bit of self-bragging, I guess, uh, along the way. we been talking about our sponsors of this is, uh, uh, is that I-45 Now and uh, Vinyl Draft. Uh, our partners are our members of this, and uh, joining me now is uh, Doug Mike here of uh, Vinyl Draft Radio, uh, who's partnered up with uh, I-45 now uh, and in and, and bringing some of the better communications to the folks here in digital media. Doug, how are you? Uh, I'm today? Good, buddy. How are you? Yeah, he's always on the road, should point out, uh, moving to the new studios uh, and today. This is moving day uh, for you here, the new Vinyl Draft uh uh, studios that are coming up and uh, I, you know, you've been in the digital marketing world for a while and I just wanted to give you a chance to come on with you and I talking about this of is that this is the trend that is happening now. Uh, what are the things that folks that should be grasping on as far as looking for ways to promote the product to a new round of audiences out there? Yeah, it's uh, so again, I mean, and, and I know you know the history, but I spent the majority of my career in the record business. I worked for Capitol Records for 14 years, uh, Virgin Records for four after that. And I, I think as much as you try to get away from the music business, it's, it's kind of a difficult thing to do. Uh, you know, a dentist is a dentist. <laughs> you, know, and, uh, right. you just you wind up kind of getting stuck into it. But um, yeah, really what I noticed as far as, as radio had, had, had gone uh streaming digital online serious everything that's kind of where it went because you don't have to absorb the cost of a that stick and uh you know there's only so many spots left on the dial and now with with app based radio you can just one touch of your phone be listening to whatever you want to listen to so um you know i started off doing different podcasts and had a podcast network set up and we started doing that and it just sort of grew and grew and grew and uh, hey, I would say that, you know, TJ and I are actually uh, getting ready to start our own podcast together, Draft 45, which uh, I'm looking forward to. But basically what, what I did was with the two stations, I, I have Final Draft Radio, which is basically sort of a water rock station. And then there's Texas Tracks. And Texas Tracks is kind of unique in that it is a, a formatless radio station, with the exception of the fact that every single artist we play is from Texas. So it can be Nora Jones, followed by ZZ Top, followed by Willie Nelson, followed by uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan. So uh, that's sort of the running, you know, thread that goes through everything. It's just all Texas artists, uh, 24 hours uh, on both stations. You can go to any app store, download Vinyl Draft Radio, and it is spelled D-R-A-U-G-H-T. It means records in here. That's Vinyl Draft. And then Texas Tracks, Tracks is spelled T-R-A-X. I'm, I'm always a little quirky with the spelling, and I know you know that. So, yeah, I yeah. always like to do a little something different with the spelling. But, yeah. you know, because of the way we were able to establish this and set it up, um, you know, I used to buy radio ads all the time when I was in the record business, and it's incredibly costly uh, because you're again, you're having to pay for all of that infrastructure. Uh, but with this, we've, we've, we've managed to get it to where it, it's affordable to the point where I offer, uh, what I offer is 100 commercials on each station for $300. So you basically get 100 commercials for $150 a month, um, broadcasting 24-7, and you can listen to it anywhere in the world. So obviously the majority of the listenership is very close to us right here. But I do get kind of a kick out of looking at my monthly reports and seeing how many people listen to Scandinavia, uh, in Italy, and Spain, and Russia. And so they, right. they, they get listened to all over the world. While you can't monetize that, it's uh, it's still kind of a cool thing to say. So um, that was sort of the thing that we had worked up was, you know, you're very much a video guy. I mean, even with this, you, you know how hard it was to get me to what I could stop a few minutes with me in front of my phone. If you just put them on this thing, you just go all the time. So it, it's great because you're able to capture all the video content and then more of the, you're listening to it while you're doing other things, guy. Um, one of the things too is you and I've uh, talked about this for a while. We're partnering up on a lot of uh, different uh, 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 venues where folks can maximize their digital uh, marketing uh, across the way. And uh, and one of the ways that uh, we're doing that is obviously you come on I forty five now, Vinyl Draft Radio, and uh, what we'll we'll be launching some new products here pretty soon, Galveston now, uh, and uh, Clear Lake now. Uh, which are coming up uh, here pretty soon. Uh, 
as you said, you were in the record business, but you got into the digital world uh, some time back. Um, and what I, the other thing is we're finding is a lot of the special events that are coming along uh, doing that. And one of those that we have coming up on the 14th uh, uh, is uh, it's a, a fun event we do in Kima at Prohibition. Talk about that. Yeah, it's uh, it's called Ash and Mash, and it's uh, again I'm playing with the name here. Uh, the Ash is cigars, the Mash is whiskey. It's a cigar whiskey event. Uh, I do a, a radio show uh, Wednesday evenings, starts at seven o'clock. It's sort of that midweek wind down, and it's basically Frank Sinatra, Tony Bennett, Diana Krall, uh, Nora Jones. It's, it's just kind of a relaxing sort of jazz and jazz vocal. A uh, couple hours to just kind of light a cigar, pour yourself a glass, and just unwind midweek. And it was such kind of a cool little concept for the show. I thought, well, how, it would be kind of neat if we could get everybody to do that in person at the same time. And so with COVID, we needed a we needed a large outdoor space. And I went by the new uh, Prohibition 52, and I saw the money that they put in that deck. They really, really raised the bar with that deck hat in. And I thought this would be just a perfect place. To do this, and so I, I kind of took up the idea. I called TJ and asked him what he thought about it. He liked it, he got it. Um, and then we wound up reaching out to um, the outside of Cigar Lounge, they provide free cigars at the event. And uh, the clearly Scotch and Bourbon Society, they found out about it, and they reached out, and they wanted to be involved there as well. So it's it's kind of a, a, a great kind of a grown up night. I mean, it's just uh, you know, kind of relax the music is not something you have to yell over it's sort of there in the background it's sort of there to kind of set the vibe and the tone and it's just great conversation with great people if you choose to network that's fine if you want to talk about something that doesn't matter what you talk about but it's just kind of a nice little middle of the week stop to relax sort of uh reward yourself for making it to the halfway point i guess with a, with a drink and a cigar and uh just have some great intelligent conversations with, uh, with great people and that's coming up. Uh, uh, next one is on the fourteenth. Fourteenth, yep. It's the fourteenth at uh, Prohibition. Second Saturday, it's second Wednesday of every month, because my first and third are booked up with city council. Right. I should point. Out, yeah, Doug is a city council member in Kima as well uh, as a small business owner. Uh, out there. And as I said, we appreciate you coming on. And, uh, Vinyl Draft and I-45 now partnering up uh, with you now for marketing uh, purposes. And if you want to promote your business on that, uh, you can give uh, Doug a call, 281-210-4608. Uh, and you can uh, sign up there. Uh, and uh, we'd be more glad to bring you on for sponsorship on both all of our platforms. It's a one for all uh, platform thing. So Doug, thanks a lot. We appreciate you coming on. With me to hear in the middle of middle of moving day uh yeah. for Doug there so we appreciate it there so uh and uh and again uh that, that this is where i get the little bit i have dual roles here now uh, uh i-45 now not only are we presenting it but we're also one of the sponsors uh here today and we appreciate uh doug for coming on uh with us here for the short while that he did let's get back talking about uh real estate now and uh we have lindsey and uh lindsey vaughn and uh and uh dan garza uh back on with us here yeah we had lindsey on with before talking about uh business coaching and uh great advice there now we're going to focus on the right thing is uh we've said it a lot of times like how, just how hot is the real estate market right now i mean uh, it's is it so is it flaming is it medium rare I mean what, what, how should you even define it right now so I've been in real estate 21 years I started when I was 19 years old this is probably the hottest market that I have seen in 20 years if you just put it in perspective there are only 72 homes in 77546 for sale right now and the average days on the market in most cases are seven or less um, so the stuff that's on the market either, you know, might be listed too high or has some condition issues. If it's still been listed a little bit longer, we, um, are seeing everything with multiple offers, lots of people paying over asking price, those kind of things. Uh, and when, when you say is it, you know, you hear the term buyer's market, seller's market, uh, right now I'm certain we would define it as a seller's market. Uh, but how much longer do we see this uh, for going on uh, that it would be a seller's market? 
when you define buyer's market, seller's market, it's in terms of months of inventory. So when a house stays on the market less than four months, that means it's a buyer's market. Currently we're in that seven days or less. So uh, I'm sorry, in a seller's market, I don't know what I said, but if it's four months or less, it's a seller's okay. market. And with that said, I, I don't see it stopping anytime soon. Um, we're seeing that they are raising the interest rates to kind of slow some of that down a little bit. But once you get over five plus months, that becomes a buyer's market. There becomes more inventory they can pick from supply and demand swaps. So it, it becomes a different market. I, I, I've just got to ask both you and Dan on this one here, Lindsay, it just, I, that it's gotten so hot with the pandemic gripping us on and we hear about the economic downturn and everything else. This is one industry that has not been, real estate has not been really that affected. Maybe commercial real estate, but residential real estate has not been affected by, by what we're seeing uh, with the pandemic right now. Can anyone so, explain to me why that is? Well, I have I, a theory, I have a theory. And Dan, you can, you can back me up or not, but um, when you spend seven months locked into your home, you either figure out it's too big or too small. And most people got really efficient working from home. So those honeydew lists got done real quick. So it was time to move. Yeah, I'll, I'll add to that and just say that uh, a lot of people uh, postponed their moves because of the pandemic. And so this demand got all pent up and then coupled with the fact that lumber prices skyrocketed because so many of the producers were affected by the pandemic created this perfect storm. So, you know, there's a shortage of houses. The cost of building a new one has gone up. The combination of those factors make it on fire is a good, is a good way to put it. As Lindsay said earlier, it's a very unique time for sure. Well, and I, again, I've used a couple of uh, my own examples uh, here today, but this is a, a perfect one. My uh, wife had been uh, living in Corpus Christi where she was working. I was living up here, had a had a townhouse in Nassau Bay, and my wife moved back here. Uh, and the original plan was, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll stay here for a year, then go find a house. Uh, obviously, two people and four dogs uh, uh, in, a, in a smaller townhouse after a while, and both of us working from home. Uh, I, was, I was the one out and about most of the time in the field, but to come home and get on the computer, uh, you found very quickly, you know, there's just so much, so much space that you can share at the dining room table. Uh, that it has to go. So eventually we go out and find a bigger house. And as I was mentioning with you or just a few minutes ago, Dan, you know, making sure we had office space for both of us. Uh, and I just wonder is, is that from what you're hearing, Lindsay, with folks in the market, uh, is this sound like most of their work is going to transition where it is going to be a lot more working from home pandemic or not that they have found that they like to work this way? we have found that we've got more productivity out of the people who are working from home. And I don't think it's because they're working more hours. I just think that they've got it down pat. There are less distractions and we have found that in the commercial, in the commercial side of real estate, business, other business owners have figured this out. They don't have to, you know, if you build it, they will come. You don't have to have a ton of space. They're lower uh, cost of the big brick and mortar, but as the, the families living inside the houses, they have figured out, okay, this is your office. You're going to work from the dining room table today. That's your office. You're going to work in Bubba's room. Um, and they, they've made it work over the last 12 months. Yeah. It's yeah. actually true of a lot of industries. You know, it, there was, I guess there was a concern over whether you could measure someone's performance if you allow them to work remotely or from home. But with today's technology, there's no, there's no question. It's really easy to figure out whether the person is getting it done. Right? You can measure it quite easily. So. Yeah. Uh, what uh, right now, if someone were to be thinking about buying a home, Lindsay, what's your recommendation to them uh, on that? Should they jump in the market now, wait till it slows down a little bit, or you know, what is the, what what advice are you giving them? If, if you wait six months, the house that you liked will be more expensive. So we need to sit down, have a really good, solid business discussion about where we're going to go, how we're going to move from one transition to the other. 
how that happens. So currently we're having sellers get everything completely ready to put it on the market down to taking the photos where I just have to hit go. Then we're finding the house that they want, getting it under contract and then putting their house on the market so that they're never homeless. It is a seamless process. We're making sure that the loans are all good and qualified so that we can have that one smooth transition. Yeah. And uh, Dan, how about you? When they're, uh, we, I know we talked about this briefly. Uh, what are you telling them uh, when folks are getting set to go uh, on the mortgage side of things? Well, uh, I'm, war I'm kind of warning them the same way Lindsay does that the market out there is unique. Sometimes a person has to miss out on three or four or five deals before they finally come to realize that they're probably going to offer need to offer considerably more than even the list price. So as a loan officer, of course, my job is to make sure once they do make that offer that the cash is ready. Uh, I like to tell my customers, well, first of all, cash borrower, cash buyers are, uh, are revered among real estate agents. And so when I hand them a pre-approval, I tell them you're essentially a cash buyer because I make sure there's no question in my mind as to whether or not we're going to be ready to fund the loan when the time comes. So, yeah, I, I, I coach them carefully and I, uh, I sort of guide them. Gotcha. Lindsay Vaughn, Dan Garza on with us. Thank you all both for being on. And by the way, as I said, two committee members uh, of our uh, Let's Go Expo uh, uh, that we got off. And uh, trust us, folks, we love this virtual. We're looking forward to when we can get back together again. But we'll, when it comes back together, we're going to do a virtual and a live thing. Uh, in person too when we do this, when we uh, get the expo going again. So thanks for talking about the real estate market uh, with us here today. And if you've got any more questions, you can give Lindsay a call 281-610-8353. She'll list your home, she'll sell your home for you, she'll buy you a home, all of it right there. One of her, her, her agents, are you, and when you're ready to get that mortgage, you can give Dan a call 713-784-9200. Thank y'all both uh, for being on out there. So you got to be healthy and make sure uh, you're also going to uh, have the right insurance for you there. And uh, and the health agents, Devin Blount, can do that. One of our sponsors of the program here today. Devin, how are you doing today? Good to have you on, Devin. Yeah, I'm doing great. We uh, just super busy right now. Um, a lot of new fun stuff. Um, it's kind of like the real estate world right now in the health insurance business as well. Yeah, I got to say, and, uh, and and I appreciate you getting on. We talked about this, and you were, you've been book solid all day. So I know we only have a few minutes with you here. For folks who may not be familiar with the health agents, health agents, tell us about what you guys do and, and how, what you specialize in. Yeah, so the health agents, our agency, we specialize in employer groups, 100 employees down to self-employed. And then we have a piece, I have a couple agents that do individuals. Um, and so individual coverage uh, is going to range from, you know, everyone's needs are completely different. So we have about 50 different carriers that we represent um, and different agents. Um, throughout Houston, uh, but our office is right there at 45 in the Beltway. Yeah. One of the things too, is that so much has changed as far as uh, health care, particularly for businesses and the like. You had the Affordable Care Act and a lot of it was retracted. And then now with the new administration come in, there's a lot of uncertainty out there. How are you guiding uh, not only business owners, but also individuals, uh, but the small businesses? How are you guiding them through the process right now? What's interesting about that is is you're right that every new administration comes up with these new game plans. And so um, it's really difficult um, to just do educational videos because next week uh, everything's going to change. Right. And so we, we have the American Rescue Plan Act, which is a big deal that just got released on uh, April 1st. And and so, you know, everything is changing and evolving. And as these businesses and business owners experience uh, change within their own business, the game plan completely changes from what we do on the health insurance side. So it's good to work with a broker that can be flexible. Um, and so that's what we try to do. Think outside the box. You know, uh, if a business owner is having uh, an issue or uh, wants to accomplish something with uh, their benefits plans, um, we just we're able to be really flexible with our clients and and it's a great part about health insurance and it's also the downside. There's no contract, right? And so if you're halfway through a year and, and you need to make a change because your employees went from 20 to 10 and, and it's a completely different strategy now, 
you need somebody that can be flexible and grow with you or, or you know, go through these hard times with you. Uh, Devin Blount, Health Agents, one of our sponsors of the Let's Go Expo on with us uh, here today. And uh, just it, it, what is the most common question you're getting now uh, from people who come to you seeking uh, health insurance coverage for their employees? You know, um, the it, it's funny. The um, they don't know where to start. They don't know what questions to ask. They just don't know where a good resource is because there's so much out there on the internet and you don't know what to trust and what's correct and what you're reading. Is that factual or did it change yesterday? Um, and so, you know, we really go into every single situation and figure out what is in the mind of the business owner and figure out what they want to do uh, and then adapt from that. Um, and so there's not like a primary question that I get a lot other than where do we start? You know, like how do, how do we even start this? Because there's just so many different ways to skin the cat at this point. Um, you know, uh, people just get confused. Uh, and are, are you finding most of your consultations coming in these kind of virtual setups or folks that want you to come by and meet with their HR services? How's that working right now? That's what's great about being in this business right now. Um, I mean, we're hiring agents like crazy because uh, everybody wants to work from home. And a lot of these business owners are now very comfortable with doing a Zoom meeting instead of me showing up at the office for these enrollment periods uh, and talking with their employees. I just jump on the screen and we're able to talk through uh, with all the employees and answer questions. And it's really made me more efficient in the business and um, other agents agents have agreed with me there that we we went from you know two or three appointments a day to now eight to ten appointments a day and we can really just kind of cram it in there and so um, it, it's really helped our business uh, and if folks want to get in touch with you uh, and find out more how do they do so yeah the website's a great option it's www.thehealthagentstx for Texas Dot com. So thehealthagentstx.com and uh, contact information is on there. Uh, email address is on there and we'll have somebody reach out to you immediately. Devin Blount of the Health Agents. Uh, thanks for coming on with us. I know you've been you've been stacked up, like you said, uh, with everything here today. We appreciate you being a part of this expo today. And uh, and thanks for giving the advice you have, too, because it's it's very important. It's the ever changing world of uh, health insurance, particularly if you're a small business owner right now, you're unsure what to do, or how to best protect your employees. We appreciate your expertise. Yeah. Just one thing real quick on this new thing that came out on April 1st. Uh, I did want to say that um, there are a lot of extra discounts that the government is pushing out for health insurance right now, but you can't get any of them without taking action. And so if there's even a question in your mind of if there's a better situation, I, I would reach out to a broker as soon as possible so that you can take advantage of some of these opportunities that uh, are in place right now. Gotcha. David, Devin, Thank thanks you. a lot. Appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, and thanks for coming on with us. We appreciate you coming on with us today. And uh, the, our expo continues here, the Let's Go Expo. Uh, we were supposed to wrap up at noon, but we've had so much great information. We'll be uh, going on here uh, for a while. And uh, some of the, uh, you know, we've talked about small businesses uh, starting up. And uh, when you're in uh, a pandemic situation uh, like this and starting up a new business can be uh, intimidating. Uh, but some folks that have done so are joining us now. Michael uh, Michael Lee and Casey Townsend of Full Circle Caterers and Cut Foil, uh, located in uh, Webster Friendswood area. And guys, hey, how are y'all doing? Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having us. We really appreciate uh, the time and uh, just, uh, literally just all of this put together. It's uh, it's really amazing to be. Yeah, and uh, folks may not uh, realize or heard about it. first. We talk about the full circle caterer. Tell us about uh, what you guys do and uh, and 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 how how's business been the last year? Yeah, so um, so I guess I'll just go ahead and take the lead on this one. Um, as far as cut foil is concerned, we have oh, we're going full circle caterers. So this will be uh, Michael Lee. You know, oh, yeah. yeah, let's make sure that the guy knows how to cook. The guy talking to us on that, right, Michael? <laughs> I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to say it. <laughs> um, well, thank you very much. Um, so, uh, Full Circle Caters, we um, believe in by our ACE, uh, ACE, ACE, our, right? um, A for adaptability, um, C for cost efficient, and E for elegant. So, we uh, we like to uh, stick by those things where people 
the they want to have an elegant uh, event, party, wedding, or you know, just baby shower, any type of party that we um, that you can think of, we are we are adapting to. That. And then we are very cost efficient because we don't want you to have to uh, pay an arm and a leg just to, to make something that you are envisioning to come true. Um, our style of food is a Southern comfort uh, style of food. We, uh, as you can see in the pictures, you know, we like to do a little bit of vegan stuff, make it really pretty for you. But uh, the food quality is what I stand by 100%. I want to make sure that the food that I put out is something that uh, I eat at home. And I'm never gonna make anything that I would never have uh, anybody else enjoy. So, yeah. And even to follow up on that, with, with all that being said, um, business in 2020 um, had there there was a, a, a sharp decline. Um, and of course, everyone is being uh, you know uh, COVID conscious, uh, six feet apart, do not gather in large groups, and so that really put a uh, stop to operations for quite some time. That was of course uh, prior to us joining the uh, the. Uh, with Chamber of Commerce. Um, they have actually been extremely supportive of us. They, uh, they, they invite us out. They, they allow us to be the caterer for a, a lot of their events that and we are also members of. And so that has uh, really like a, kind of put us in a limelight to where members of the community are able to see what it is that we can share with these talents, um, the staff that we are able to, uh, to provide, just the overall service. And that's really what we're, we're really glad to have. I can absolutely say that COVID-19 uh, almost took us out, uh, <laughs> but we, we, and sorry, the guys froze up a little bit there. Uh, we are at the, uh, let's go expo. I have one. I'm TJ Alts, I 45 now and, uh, Michael Lee and Casey Townsend of full circle caterers. Uh, we're trying to get them back on with us here. Uh, and we'll come back to them here because we want to talk about, because they opened up their business, uh, right in the middle of uh, the pan of the pandemic when it first started up in 2020. You just heard Casey Townsend talking about that. They also have Cut Foil, which is a, uh, a bistro, wine bistro located over in Webster. And uh, sorry, we had lost uh, their signal there. Uh, hopefully we can get them back uh, in just a little while. When we do, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get them back on uh, screen with us uh, here uh, in just a little while. Uh, and uh, sorry, that gets us a little bit head on to our segment. Uh, we were on uh, next. I'm going to have uh, from Moody Bank. Uh, 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 Andrea Webb was going to come on with us and talk about uh, the we're getting her in place right now uh, on that. Although let me check and see how uh, Michael and Casey are doing. Let me see. Guys, we got y'all back again here. Let's see how we're doing here. We got y'all back. Yes, yes. We are back. Good. Well, the entire my, time, <laughs> our internet decides to just cut off. Right yeah, I know. <laughs> we did this test run. Yeah, this we should listen to David a little bit more uh, on our on our technical side. But let me ask you, yes. Mike, because you you've been in the business for a long while, but you decided in the middle of the pandemic to buy this business and get going. Tell me about about why you made that decision when you did, and are there times you go, "Oh my goodness, I can't believe this." Um, that is a, I think every hour mentality that I have right now is like, why did I do this to myself or why did I do this to us? Um, but, uh, as a lot of people know is, um, 2020, uh, it did take a really big hit on a lot of business. Owners. Um, and, uh, we took time to where, um, there are some people out there who say that 2020 was a great time to purchase a business but a horrible time to operate a business um you know so we took that time to to look into something we always want to do i've been in this industry for 14 years and something i enjoy doing and don't ever see myself straight away and it's like well why don't i work for myself i work so hard for others it's time for me to work for myself and for the people who want to see me yeah. Uh, and one of the things you and I had talked about this yesterday, um, you also had, and I have the caters, but you have cut foil wine bar. Tell us about that because, you know, that's another one that, uh, uh, that, you know, people are, you know, when, when, particularly when at one point the governor said, okay, all bars have to shut down. So you had to adjust that business to, uh, to adjust to what you guys have had to do uh, as far as that business is concerned at uh, Cutfoil, correct? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So, just like our Canadian company, uh, uh, 
Cutfall had to learn how to to, to adapt as well. Um, and with the adapting is that when when Governor Abbott shut uh, the all bars down, uh, we now had to we did stay closed for the month of July, and we and we told ourselves like, well, you know, we just got this in April, we're already shut down twice, and it's like, what do we need to do? Well, let's just convert our to um, uh, just into a restaurant, right? It turned into a bistro, add some items. We had a, a bunch of entrees, uh, things that I really enjoyed making. One of my favorite things we had on the menu was the embrace short uh, with the poker grits with the my reduction. And, and that was a really big hit. Um, but then once um, Governor Abbott pulled, uh, released a lot of the executive order, you know, it uh, we went back to our roots of being a wine bar, where so it's you know char- focusing on charcuterie boards and different styles of cheeses, types of cheeses, meats, and doing more kind of a flatbread style to kind of pair with the wines itself. Uh, and uh, and you see their website there, Cut Foil, the wine bar of Webster. Uh, uh, it's right on the edge there. It's on uh, five twenty eight though. So you, if you're friends with it, it's only a few minutes uh, around for me. Um, can you talk about what 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 have y'all adjusted uh, as far as the business is concerned uh, that you uh, will see going forward now into 2021, 2022, that will always be part of your business that you had to adjust as part of the pandemic? Um, I can definitely say that um, people enjoy our open floor concepts. Um, the spacious uh, seating arrangement that we have really does seem to play a a good part in uh, this uh, operating as uh, not only a bar, but as a lounge. And so uh, just like with our, our latest uh, our latest project that we actually just started up was coffee and tea in the mornings. So at 7 a.m., we're opening up every single day outside of Sundays, uh, offering coffee and tea. And there's actually, there's a gym next door we are at, uh, beginning to uh, be able to market to because that is a, a large, a large amount of foot traffic that we have previously been mm, not able to uh, grasp their attention. Uh, apparently, people don't want to drink wine before, during, or after the gym. I could not imagine that. Um, but yeah, so I can definitely say that that's something that we uh, we incorporated during COVID that will remain um, because we're, we're already paying for the space. We might as well use it. And so um, another thing that I think we are keeping that was what... Uh, I guess all the, the just like the, the small decorations that we've been putting in um, just to kind of, you know, we, we really want to get, get the lounge feeling going. People come in and they, they enjoy the ambiance that we have. Uh, we're, we're kind of laid back and that's just kind of like we, we enjoy that um, that ambiance that we're able to provide as well. It's just something that we, we all really enjoy doing. Um, something that is you would typically find like in inner city the downtown uh, area a bar uh, we want to let people know that we can provide that same level of downtown bar here in webster and you know friends would and uh, just the, the entire bay area uh just district uh yeah oh uh, yeah that's that is my answer yeah no it's a great one and two young guys who uh you, I, 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 I have to ask you, Casey, you came in a little bit later on this. You you and Michael have grown up. You knew each other. You were best of buds as kids. Uh, and this is a great story about the two of y'all. Uh, and you got you came in this. Michael had already made the leap. Uh, and I guess he just got lonely and decided to have uh, you. But you were affected by COVID, actually. And that's how you come here. We should point out a bit. This, this was not just a, hey, Michael had an idea, he called you up and you joined him. Talk about how you became part of this, Casey. Yeah, so um, I was actually a, a, a longtime supporter of Cut Foil before I became a part owner. Um, and they're, not, uh, they're not present with us right here, um, but there are actually two other owners, uh, Roderick Hines and Tracy Miller. And so the three initial uh, owners, they, they had a Cut Foil whenever they did their soft opening. I drove over an hour just to come and see them because Mike is one of my like my oldest friends, and he's like uh, he's a, literally like an older brother to me. So I will always show support, always show love, and I will always be there. But um, I want to say that uh, towards uh, towards August, I was let go from my job. I worked in uh, IT. I was in the healthcare uh, industry, and I worked in IT for about four years there. And whenever I was let go, I just suddenly had a lot of time, and I already knew that um, because of what was going on. Uh, because of what was going on with uh, COVID, I knew that his bar had been 
time. He was like, well, if you guys did anything, man, you let me know because now I'm free. Now I have time. And I guess whenever I started working with them, we really just started seeing like a, a synergy going on. It, it only made sense for me to come on board. And so, of course, you know, we, we, we had to talk. We, we made sure that everybody was in agreement and uh, I, I soon became a, a business owner. And uh, I want to say this is probably one of the most challenging and fun times I have, I have ever been just a bit a part of. Uh, literally every day is a challenge, but we look at things, um, different perspectives. We are able to really grasp, uh, grasp the problems that come our way and we are able to uh, achieve uh, the things that we need to do. Uh, yeah, what could have been what could have been really a a, a kind of a, a near disastrous event, losing your job in the middle of a pandemic and not knowing what you could do next, yeah. and getting a whole different field, uh, you've been able to make it work. And uh, and 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 particularly too, uh, good thing you're getting to work with your childhood buddy too, and uh, and it's something else. And when we all chatted yesterday, folks, and. Uh, uh, these guys, these are some fun guys, and there's some people that you should support too. I know my wife had already heard about the Beast Shirt, so uh, we'll be coming by and seeing you. Uh, Michael Lee and Casey Townsend, full circle caterers, by the way, and now we can, you know, doing businesses again. And Michael, we got cut off with the technology. Let me ask you here, on uh, you know, catering business was you know, it was so minimal in 2020. How's it looking already for 2021? 2021 is looking up. Um, I do have an event director on board now as well, taking, uh, taking our line of uh, LinkedIn events. Uh, we have been very fortunate, uh, especially as um, Casey pointed out, that being a part of the Chamber of Commerce has definitely helped us really build our, our portfolio and our um, existence, you know, back into that. And uh, we are meeting with clients and we are doing things to get ourselves set up. We have a few events this week, um, looking to book some more events. Or if anybody wants to book the event, you know, no matter how small, no matter how big, we will get you taken care of. Gotcha. Michael, Michael Lee, Casey Townsend, thank you guys both. You see the number there, 832-409-2532. Uh, Cut Foil, Tell, where's Cut Foil located? So people know where to come find you when they can, if they need you. Yeah. So and, five and five twenty-eight. Um, so, if you're familiar with the Daywave uh, Village, uh, we are uh, located literally next door to Fitness Connection. Um, for some strange reason, we're still trying to work it out. A lot of um, GPS uh, applications take people to the back of our store. Uh, if you just drive around, like I, I know it sounds so crazy, but if you just drive like an additional like fourteen seconds, you just come around, you will literally see us. We're in the corner. Um, they said we're next door to Fitness Connection. The only bar with the cat yet. Yeah. Good. Thanks a lot, Michael and Casey. Thanks for coming on. And uh, uh, great story about starting up in the business you did and also your all's friendship uh, there uh, uh, with us uh, here today uh, as part of this. And good luck to you guys. Uh, we're going to be following and uh, hopefully next year we'll uh, have you in the real person expo with us. All right. Yeah, that would be awesome. Thank you. Thank that, you very much. That would be. And we'll all right, thanks. Yeah, that's it. I'm all for that. Now, <laughs> catering at my house. Thought we'll, we'll have a party. And get this. Yes, all right, Michael, Casey, thanks for coming on with us. We appreciate it. You guys are fun. Um, I'm looking forward to hanging out with you guys a little bit more. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, and uh, and it, it has been uh, good. As I said, we're going a little bit long uh, with this, folks, but bear with us. We've had a lot of good info here today. And, uh, uh, and thanks for our chamber sponsors of being part of this. Uh, and one of those is our Aflac Independent Agent uh, here, uh, Stephanie Ronaldus Monroy, uh, joining us here. And you can tell, yeah, and see, I've been working on the name here. And she even brought the Aflac duck with us. She's an independent agent. Let me get you a little closer here so you can get more in camera, uh, Stephanie. But uh, tell us, I mean, it, you know, everyone's familiar with the, ner with the term Aflac, but in this case, yes, it's Aflac, but you're an independent agent. Tell us how that's different than what maybe interesting when they see yes, the tv exactly a lot of people have, of course um but a lot of people don't realize that we are independent agents and i am local out of galveston county and i really enjoy being able to help uh local businesses and individuals and why did you decide okay i can do this but i want to do it with aflac why was that your decision 
Well, my decision was definitely um, based on where they came from. The Amos Brothers, it's a family business back in 1955. They saw uh, how much their uh, family went through when their father passed with cancer and it nearly destroyed them and their family, um, you know, as far as going into bankruptcy. So they started what uh, was the first of its kind, cancer insurance. And that really touched my heart, um, knowing that, you know, the personal things that I have gone through um, and the hardships, and I never knew what F life was. <laughs> I've, I'm sure I've seen those commercials, but I really never knew what it did. So to me, um, that, uh, that company, you know, that being the forefront in supplemental insurance, really, I felt hit home, you know, in helping people. And we should put out, it is supplemental insurance that goes on exactly. bonds. So explain to folks how that works, because they may not understand how that process works. A lot of people do not understand that, and that's what I love to educate people on, um, just like I didn't know what it was. Supplemental insurance can work with your major medical, if you have major medical um, you know, we hope we do, but uh, some people don't even have major medical, but it can still help them because AFLAC pays them cash benefits um, if they can't work or really if they just become ill or, you know, have an accident and um, it, it just uh, provides that extra cushion, extra gap, uh, that money to keep moving forward. Uh, and when folks come out, they, they would say, oh, why can't I just call the corporate headquarters. For, I see the commercial. Why don't I just call them? How come it doesn't work that way? Exactly. That's a really good question. And uh, the part that I love about being an independent agent is that I can help people um, sort through a lot of that. You actually can't even call AFLAC and get uh, AFLAC uh, supplemental insurance. They actually will point you out to a local agent because it's so helpful to have the uh, guidance. Um, we help you with your budget. You know, we help you with your needs and uh, we're able to get those affordable plans and not only get it to you um, according to your needs, but also stick with it and stick with you through claims and processing and really um, just, you know, working with you um, and your and your businesses to uh, be a local consultant. Yeah, and well, you have your fan club already joining us uh, here today. We've uh, already heard from uh, Diana uh, Gabera and uh, and now also Jeanette Knowles uh, oh. joining about that. And, uh, I was, and I guess that's the, also as an independent agent too. That personal service you able to provide to folks is, is a big thing. Yes, personal service is um, number one. I mean, I came from a family business that you know we owned restaurants. Um, I was working since I was thirteen. And um, I, I know what personal service is about. Uh, I know how hard it is for business owners. I know how hard it is for HR uh, people to really um, understand all of all of this, everything, all the hats that they wear. And um, I just want to be that person, that uh, that HR person, that business owner, that individual doesn't have to worry about it. I'm going to get them a check, <laughs> yeah. and they don't need to worry about it. Um, during you know COVID, I had um, employees who had short-term disability. Uh, they literally drove up through you know their CVS clinic, got you know tested. Unfortunately, you know was positive test. Sent me a picture of the test. <laughs> um, I basically did it through my phone. Uh, got what they needed. Uh, uploaded it to Aflac site, and they then had a check in there deposited directly into their checking account within four business days. Right. And also, too, is that it's not big businesses that only the ones that can take advantage of this, right? We're seeing from Jeanette Olsen, she talked about her small business had only three people and you were able to help them out, right? Exactly, exactly. So not only do we help individuals, um, we do have individuals that, you know, because I'm self-employed, you know, we, we do help people who are self-employed, um, but we also work with small businesses as little as three on up to, you know, 300,000. So. Gotcha. All right. Uh, Stephanie uh, Ronaldus monroy on with us.
us here today. And thank you so much thank you, for, the, for being one of our sponsors Thanks. of this day. Should point out, she's been actually sitting off to the side <laughs> from me all day today, taking down notes and everything else and, and interspersing with everybody. So we appreciate you coming on uh, with Thanks. us here today. Uh, the, the Let's Go Expo continues here. Uh, we're going a little bit long, but we're getting uh, near the end. But we didn't want to wrap up because a big issue coming on right now uh, on, for folks is to, how to deal with the latest uh, your business on getting assistance that you need uh, from uh, from uh, from your banks and many being the PPP program as we call it uh, out there and by the way too we should point out before we bring on Andrea Webb from Moody Bank uh, she is uh, has her mic muted uh, and uh, we need to get that turned and she's in there at Carol's office she came and joined us up from there today we'll get her all set there hey, Andrea Webb from Moody Bank is on hi hey, Andrea how are you today I'm good TJ thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for coming on with us here today. Obviously, uh, you know, for small businesses and the like, they're still hurting in many ways. And uh, and the personal protection, you know, the payroll, I should say, uh, protection program uh, that's available out there. Can you explain to folks how that's working now? Because we heard a lot about it last year when it was uh, the first relief plans came out, but it's still going on, maybe under some official different names, but there's still help out there that the federal government's playing and that can work with banks as Moody Bank to get that taken care of. That's right, TJ. So it has been extended to May 31st now. So customers can still apply for either a second draw, even if they got a first draw in that first round, they can apply for a second draw now. Or that if they never applied in that first round and they want to apply now for a first draw, they can apply for that as well. The banks can process through May 31st, and then the SBA will process those through June 30th. As a bank, we're looking at probably cutting that off as of May 14th so that we have enough time to process those applications through the end of May. There is talk that the money may run out as well, um, even as soon as the end of April. So you'd want to get your applications in as soon as possible. The criteria is exactly the same as it was in the first round in terms of how you qualify. It's all based on your payroll and you can base it on either your 2019 payroll or your 2020 payroll. And then if you're applying for a second draw, there's one extra caveat there. And that is that you have to show a reduction in revenue from 2019 to 2020 for one specific quarter. So if it's second quarter of 2019, you have to show that same second quarter in 2020 that you had a reduction in revenue of 25% or more. If you can't show it for just one quarter because maybe your accounting software or your accountant helps you do that on an annual basis, you can also do that calculation on an annual basis. And then, uh, oh, sorry, I was going to say. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you keep talking, but, uh, Andrea, I'm sorry. So the great news, though, for those folks that file with the Schedule C on their personal tax return is that there was a big change to how they did that calculation. So in the first round, it was based on your net income on line 31. This time it's based on your gross with a cap of 100,000. So an individual owner who didn't have employees can get as much as $20,833. And in the first round, it was not that way. So that's been a big boost for owners that can get a lot more who maybe even didn't qualify at all in the first round because they had negative net income. One, uh, one of the things is is also, too, that there's some emphasis on uh, this round where businesses are what would be called low income areas. Can you talk about what, how that's changed up slightly? Uh, so, that's slightly changed up considerably uh, this time around. So the main thing was that there was a two week window in there where the SBA basically shut down applications and you could not. We could not as a bank submit those applications for those larger customers during that time frame. That unfortunately has lapsed now, so everybody can come back and apply again. But it was a, a nice tweak there to make sure that the low to moderate income, the smaller businesses, those single owners, independent contractors were able to focus on those folks uh, and make sure we got money into the little guys. 
yeah, and that was just basically giving a chance for the, the, the folks that in underserved communities to um, move ahead of the line. And now that that's opened up for the whole process, but there are deadlines, uh, as you had said, that even with Moody Bank and what you're looking at now on, on your screen, folks, this is, if you go to the Moody Bank uh, website, uh, you will find uh, right at the back, a big yellow banner talks about the COVID-19 resources. You click on that and you can go to the PPP uh, uh, resources page and you will see there what it had. And again, it's uh, moodybank.com and it has all the information uh, you would have there and including a document checklist, which is what I was gonna ask you about first, uh, next, Andrew, is that what is it documents wise that need, everyone needs to have before they even walk in the door or give you a call to set up everything? So the easiest way to do it is actually to go to our website because there's a portal there rather than having to fill out a paper application, you will answer questions and it will walk you through each of the actual questions that are on an application. And then once you're done answering all those questions, it'll ask you to upload support documentation. So kind of what you're reading right now is, you know, what an application looks like, be prepared to provide this information when you sit down and log into the portal. Here's what you're going to need to provide. And then you'll upload support documentation. And actually all you need to provide would be your payroll information for whichever year you determine you want to use, either 2019 or 2020 payroll. And then it's best to provide us with those 941s or your 940 that you file when you file your payroll um, for, for tax purposes, you file those. So you provide us with that in an actual payroll journal that maybe you generate through QuickBooks or whatever software you use for accounting purposes. And really that's all you have to provide unless you are the type I referred to earlier as a Schedule C filer, then you do have to give us a copy of that 2019 or 2020 Schedule C so that we can determine that calculation. But that's it if you're applying for a first draw. The only difference there with a second draw is that you just need to provide information to show that reduction in the revenue. But it's a very simple process that walks you through step by step and then once you're done, you hit submit, it comes over to us and we review the information. If we have any questions, we reach out to you. If we need additional documentation, same thing, we'll ask you for that. And then we push that application out to you to sign initial date and send back to us and then we submit to the SBA. Uh, and uh, how long does the full process of, you know, from start to finish uh, take? So I would say from the time that you submit to us through the portal, we probably will be back to you within, say, a week and a half or so to get that final application signed and submitted to the SBA. In terms of how long the SBA may take, it, it varies. So it can be anywhere from a day to a couple of weeks, depending on whether your application may reject for some particular reason, such as a criminal history or indicating that they show that your business has not been in business since February 15th of 2020, which is one of the requirements. So small little things can place it on hold. We have the opportunity to cure those and get them to the approval stage. So typically most of them are approved in, in a few days. Uh, and I had this question uh, from someone the other day on this is that, is there, do you have to be a pre-existing customer at a particular bank? or financial institution to be eligible to apply through that institution? And no, you do not. The only thing that will be required um, in terms of Moody Bank is we do have to do our due diligence from a know your customer standpoint. So you would be asked for your driver's license, your social security number, all of that information in order to run some checks first and make sure that everything's okay. And then we would ask you to open a Moody Bank checking account so that those loan proceeds could be funded into that checking account. And of course, we're also doing this simultaneously for forgiveness from the first round as well. So you could also utilize if you're a current Moody Bank customer who applied in the first round and you want to apply for forgiveness, you can also go to our website and apply for forgiveness there as well. Uh, and speaking of the first round, there were some folks who applied in the first round 
uh, and it may have come a bit later, like, and they may have been denied because the money had run out at that point. Uh, I had this question again from a viewer the other day is, is that if, uh, if that had happened, am I still eligible to go in for the second round? Absolutely. So you can definitely come back and apply again, especially if the money ran out. You can absolutely come back again. And there were some types of businesses that didn't even qualify in the first round. For example, a 501c6, um, you know, 501c3s, different 501cs were not eligible in the first round and are eligible now. So, ex for example, the Friendswood Chamber of Commerce is now eligible. So uh, different organizations like that, uh, a BAHEP, a Economic Alliance, you know, um, artillery clubs, you know, social clubs, things like that, who were not even qualified at all in the first year of doing these, and now they're eligible. Uh, Andrea Webb from Moody Bank on, on with us talking about a very important subject, uh, and that is the uh, emergency disaster uh, payroll protection program that's still ongoing uh, and the, potentially the new round of that. Again, give us the deadlines uh, that folks need to be following uh, because that's important because once you miss the deadline, uh, unfortunately, you're going to be out. That's correct. So the deadline to apply with a bank will be May 31st, but depending on your particular bank, they may push that deadline back a little bit. For Moody Bank, it will be May 14th. As of now, uh, it may end up getting pushed back a little bit to maybe like April 30th, depending on the volume, because we're trying to make sure we're keeping up with the volume. We can get everybody decisioned and get them submitted to the SBA in time. But as of now, our deadline is May 14th. And then the SBA, again, will have a deadline of June 30th. So they can still fund after May 31st up to June 30th. All right, Andrea Webb, Moody Bank. Andrew, thanks for coming on with us. We appreciate it. This is very important stuff. A lot of details in. Uh, obviously, we've shown you the website, moodybank.com, uh, if you want to get more assistance from Moody Bank. Uh, but uh, all the banks in our, in our region are taking part in some way of this as well. But uh, we do appreciate Andrew Moody Bank coming on with us. Moodybank.com. They have right at the top of the page. Big yellow banner. Uh, you can sign up there. Uh, go in there, and it it, it is a good step by step guide uh, to work there. Andrew, thanks a lot for Thank coming you. on with us here today. We appreciate it. A lot of information out there. We'll get an update with how how well uh, it helps everyone out. All right. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Andrew. We appreciate it. Uh, this is the Let's Go Expo brought to you by uh, right now Acion uh, Productions. I said, unfortunately, uh, Lewis couldn't make it on here. He had to, he actually go and take care of it for uh, wedding photography, special events. Uh, you need real estate photographer even more. Uh, you can give him a call uh, and he more glad to help you out. Uh, and uh, great, uh, great work there. And one of those, by the way, that our friend Lindsey Vaughn is uh, coached. Uh, uh, and, and how to handle his business there. And again, his number 832-819-0638, 832-819-0638. Uh, we appreciate them sponsoring on uh, with us here today. Uh, and uh, as we get things to, to really wrap up, we know we went a little bit long. Uh, we do appreciate uh, everyone coming on uh, uh, with us uh, here today uh, for all this, including all of our sponsors. Uh, we went about half an hour long, but I don't know. I, th I would think, Carol, I think it's probably uh, worth it. Uh, uh, the information we got out of this today was uh, was a lot, wasn't it? Yes, it was awesome. We had a great group of speakers and sponsors today. Roy and, and I also will bring in Lindsey Vaughn with us here, uh, who's uh, one of our uh, leads on the committee, uh, putting it together before we get totally wrapped up uh, here. Lindsey, what... You know, as we look, a bit, how do you look at the business here going forward in 2021? I think that the business is going to do great. I know I'm in one of those, you know, essential worker type businesses, but people are buying homes, which means they still have jobs. They were still getting checks and that kind of thing. So I see business as a whole getting back to normal. Gotcha. Uh, and uh, and for, for Carol, and we don't want to forget, and we'll be coming back to talk about this in just a little bit more before we really wrap up here, is that if someone wants to join up with the chamber with all the, the, the festiv not festivities, all the activities it does, how can they do so? And, and uh, what would be the basic price for them to do so? We, uh, based on our 
uh, membership on how many full-time employees you have. So for instance, one through nine is 300 and it goes up to as high as uh, $525. Gotcha. That's our highest membership. All and right. The chamber is located at 1100 South Brunswick Drive, which is also 518. And we are next door to Stevenson Park and City Hall. Yeah. Uh, and hang on, we're going to be talking about the, uh, before we wrap up here, let me uh, bring on Jessica Peterson from Interfaith Caring Ministries, one of our uh, sponsors uh, here today. And uh, Jessica, thanks for y'all being on. Uh, as I said, come back. Uh, and wanted to give you a chance to talk about uh, uh, what all Interfaith is uh, doing, uh, ICM is doing in, uh, in Friendswood. Yeah, um, thanks, TJ. So we just wanted to wrap up today um, by talking about our connections directly with the Friendswood community. Um, in 2020 alone, we were able to assist 1,000 clients, uh, 1,000 clients that live in Friendswood, and that equates to 500 households. So that was the impact of how we gave back to those in need in Friendswood. Um, we also have a faith-based partnership with the Harbor Church. Um, so they've supported ICM since 2008, and they're a monthly donor to our agency. Um, and then we also have uh, a resident, a Friendswood resident, Jennifer Cloyd, that serves on our ICM board of directors. Um, so that's just some ways that we're connected to the community there in Friendswood. And of course, we love being a, a member of the Friendswood Chamber of Commerce. So thanks for having us today. Yeah. And if folks want to uh, help out, uh, how do they get in touch with you guys to be able to help out and uh, make donations, volunteer time uh, and the like as well? Yeah, a great way to get connected with Interfaith Caring Ministries is through our website. So it's www.icmtx.org. You can also call our agency directly at 281-332-3881. That's our main agency phone number, um, as well as the ICM resale shop, 281-332-2025. You can also find us on Facebook, Interfaith Caring Ministries. Um, another quick shout out, we are having our golf tournament this year. We had to cancel last year due to COVID-19, but we're coming back this year with our 23rd annual ICM golf tournament. It'll be Monday, May 17th at Top Golf Webster. You can call ICM and get in touch with me, Jessica Peterson. I'm our director of development and I can help get you connected to our golf fundraiser. And, and it's the type of golf tournament I really like, which is the one where it's at Top Golf, and I really don't have to go around all 18 holes, and I stay in the one spot, and uh, I don't care if my shot goes straight or not. It just, you know, you just whack the ball and just and have a good time and get points and and have a good time and get to interact with everybody who's in the tournament at the same time. So that's right. Uh, it's, it's a great a networking fun. place. So. Yeah. May, May 17th at Top Golf, and uh, go to icmtx.org and uh, you can find out more. Jessica, thanks a lot for guys coming on with us here today. We appreciate it. ICM does a great job uh, for the League City and Friendswood communities, and we really appreciate it. It should point out uh, that uh, they, they've had to weather COVID too, so they could use your help. Uh, and again, the ICM resale shop, if you've got some items you want to donate uh, over there, it helps out folks. It's 281 332 2025 because that helps get them funds as well to help other people out so jessica thanks a lot we appreciate you thank you tj all right and uh now we'll wrap things up let's bring carol markintel uh back on with us uh here today and uh wrap things up here and carol final thoughts here as we wrap up things for the let's go expo well it just shows that no matter what happens you can figure ways that uh you can do things better and um, work together with a group and have a great outcome. This yeah, is a funny bit to work together on. Yeah, and I want to thank, and I'll bring in back Lindsay as well uh, on this as well. Uh, Lindsay, it's uh, uh, any final words from you today as we wrap up the expo? We went about 30 minutes long, but uh, that'll happen uh, from time to time. Uh, first one of these, uh, you know, uh, virtual expos for the, one of the chambers. We're glad. Thank you all for letting us be a part of this here today. We appreciate it. Well, we just want to say thank you to all of our sponsors, but also if you're looking for a place for your business to get involved, we have a great ambassador team. We are getting you in front of other people. So if you need more information about how to get your business in a better place, come see us because we would definitely like to get you into that ambassador program. Gotcha. And, uh, and make sure you sign up and, uh, and, and we will be more glad uh, here at the chamber. I know they'll be more than glad to get you guys 
uh, set and going there as well. And you can find out more at friendswoodchamber.com. Uh, and uh, you know, Lindsay, uh, we appreciate you and uh, Carol as well. Uh, thanks a lot for everyone for watching us here today. Uh, a reminder to you, we have the replay of this starts right off the bat. So if you uh, missed any portion of this, you can go back as we've dealt with how to handle PPP loans, how to handle real estate, mortgages, insurance, uh, supplemental insurance on top of that, your IT needs, uh, what it's like to get business planning done because Lindsay gave this great presentation on uh, business planning uh, that you need to take advantage of as well and a whole lot more uh, here in the last two and a half hours. I'm TJ Alds, I-45 Net.